Damn, I can't pop my left elbow? Alright, school, I guess. As the day was coming to a close, I started feeling restless. A lot of time passed at school as I chatted with Mion, Rika-chan, and Rena. Satoko's seat was empty again today. Just a lonely desk and chair where a person was meant to be. Despite all my effort, the situation hadn't changed at all. I murdered Satoko's uncle with my own hands. But even though he was permanently buried in the ground, Satoko still hadn't come back. Every day without Satoko felt like it would go on for an eternity. It was all meaningless. The weight of those words made me feel depressed. We did what we could to help a friend in need. We tried with all our might. But even so, our effort went unrewarded. On top of that, I felt disgusted with myself every moment that I began to doubt my friends. Why so glum, Keichan? Anyway, what would you like to do for today's club activity? Mion cheerfully called out to me while rifling through the club locker. I wasn't interested in club activities without Satoko. Sorry, Mion. I need to head home today. What? Keichan? Is something wrong? Did you overeat? Or maybe you drank too much? Or did you overdo something else? I didn't overdo anything. As a matter of fact, it was taking everything I had to dodge Mion's prying questions. Damn it. Normally, I'd be able to turn Mion's lame jokes around on her easily. It's frustrating that I'm not thinking as clearly as usual. Katie kun Rena quietly stood by my side, carrying a bag. I immediately recognized what Rena wanted to say. Ah, oh, that's right. I need to go to Rena's house today to help tidy up. Yep, that's right. Rena's yard is starting to overflow with cute things. It's not the sort of thing that can be cleaned up alone. Rena and I were completely in sync. Hmm. I guess it can't be helped. In that case, this old man will have to start thinking about tomorrow's club activities. And an appropriate punishment game. After that surprisingly frank response, Mion walked back to her seat. Once Mion was sufficiently far away, Rena stealthily whispered into my ear. Hey, Keiichi-kun. I think we should go to Angel Mart today. Right. Rena must have had the same concern about Satoko. Shion never told us where Satoko went, and we still haven't seen her. I wasn't the only one feeling anxious about that. We still need Shichan to tell us about Satoko-chan's whereabouts. She never gave us a proper explanation. Aren't you worried? Yeah. I nodded in agreement. Hopefully Shion will be able to tell us everything. Shion had no reason to hide anything. But something always seemed to come up whenever I tried asking about Satoko. On top of that, Oishi and the police were getting suspicious. I remembered how lost and confused I felt when I met him at the library yesterday. It made me terrified. I definitely can't lower my guard around him. That's what my heart was telling me. If he was trying to confirm our alibis, there was a good chance he suspected something. I can't allow him to go any further. Absolutely not. Keiichi, you're making a scary face. Ah! I was surprised by a sudden voice from behind my back. When I looked back, Rika-chan was smiling at me and saying, Nipa. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm sorry. But anyway, I want you to come with me, Keiichi. Rika-chan looked up at me with her huge, adorable eyes. <laughs> Rena wants Rika-chan to stare at her like that. Rena, could you wait a moment? We'll be back soon. Rika-chan pliantly, pl yeah, pleasantly smiled as she said that to Rena. Then she glanced back at me to coax me out of the classroom. I wonder what's going on with Rika-chan. Well, Rena will be waiting here. Right. I think I'll be back pretty quick. I followed Rika-chan out of the classroom. She had been staring at me for a while now with a cautious expression, never smiling. I chased after Rika-chan from behind, 
feeling like I was walking into a foe's lair unarmed. We moved to a shady spot behind the school building. If this school was a bit less wholesome, this would be the ideal location for seniors to harass or underclassmen. In other words, I simply couldn't feel comfortable in a place like this. Chie Sensei's curry vegetable garden was planted back here. Oops. Can vegetables grown in a place like this actually taste good? I was filled with the urge to get out of here right away. Why did I come to a place like this? What was Rika-chan thinking? The innocent smile Rika-chan was wearing earlier had completely vanished. She was just staring at me with a harsh expression. Rika-chan, what did you want to talk about? Do you remember what I asked you the other day, Keiichi? Rika-chan looked me straight in the eyes as she asked that. I recalled the other day, when Rika-chan tightly grabbed me by the wrist. Please tell me, where is Satoko gone? Her eyes were full of tears as she solemnly asked that. I felt a little relieved. If she was asking about Satoko, that meant she didn't know anything about me. I'd like to know that too, Rika-chan. I'm about to go ask Shio on that very question. However, Rika-chan followed that up with a comment strong enough to destroy all traces of those thoughts. Fucking windows! Even if Keiichi and the others did something they shouldn't have done, none of that matters right now. I froze. All the blood in my body ran cold. It was like my guard had become meaningless. My ability to keep my opponent at a safe distance and to launch a counterattack were completely denied to me right from the beginning of this interaction. A shock ran through my whole body, like I was shot with a cannon. Something that shouldn't have been done? That means Rika-chan knows what I did? Keiichi and the others? How? How does she know? How is she aware that multiple people were involved? My throat dried up and my tongue became tangled. I couldn't say anything. Is this Rika-chan's attempt at threatening me? Keiichi. Please tell me, where is Satoko? My lips, my throat, and even my heart trembled. I started convulsing. I lost my voice. Despite how hard I was breathing, only a light breath escaped me. I don't know that either. I'm just as worried sick about Satoko. For all the words swirling about in my mind, none of them could reach my lips. My entire body was swallowed by unimaginable terror. What should I say? What shouldn't I say? Should I trust her or not? Rika-chan, who are you really? Keiichi, please get a hold of yourself. Please listen to me. Rika-chan grabbed me by the hand and shook it. My body swayed about at Rika-chan's mercy. Keiichi! You did what you did for Satoko's sake, right? Even I understand that. How can she understand? Rika-chan, how do you know? What do you know? How much do you know? Even though I wanted to ask, I just couldn't do it. If I ask any leading questions, I'll be digging my own grave. Keiichi, even if you and the others did something you shouldn't have, that doesn't matter right now. But Satoko! We need to get Satoko back. Right away. The look in Rika-chan's eyes told me that she knew everything. It looked like a universe was spreading in her big black pupils. Deep, dark eyes that could see through everything in the entire world. It was a rather mature expression. The likes of which I never would have imagined coming from Rika-chan. Rika-chan... Have I done something that can never be taken back? The urge to ask her that welled up inside me. Keiichi, what you did isn't a problem. But Satoko, please bring Satoko back right away. Otherwise, if I don't bring Satoko back, what will happen? I finally peeled away the skin clogging my throat to utter a few words. Barika-chan came back with an aggressively strong answer. As 
Satoko will die. I felt the pain of being stabbed in the heart. Why? What does that mean? I somehow managed to ask that question while losing my voice. But Rika-chan didn't answer. If you're still saying that after everything I've told you, I guess you really don't know, Keiichi. I never would have expected this. In the end, she said that in a pathetic voice devoid of sorrow or compassion. Hold on. Is something terrible going down? Is our peaceful, everyday, ideal future getting closer to an impossible fantasy? My unease about the future was growing stronger and stronger. Once I recognized how irrational I was acting, I started to calm down. Rika-chan. Shion should know where Satoko is. My voice was unexpectedly calm. Rika-chan was sincerely concerned about Satoko. Hearing her sad voice a moment ago convinced me that she had no intention of deceiving me to gain information. In that case, we should let Rika-chan help us search for Satoko. Rena and I are about to head to Angel Mort to talk to Shion. Would you like to come with us, Rika-chan? Understood. Rika-chan responded with a powerful nod. Yeah, this is just gonna create discord. Then Rika-chan and I returned to Rena. Naturally, Rika-chan's presence made Rena extremely cautious. But her expression completely changed when she learned Rika-chan was simply concerned about Satoko. So the three of us headed to Angel Mort together. But Shion wasn't there. She's not here?! My hysterical voice caused a few customers to turn back. Sorry that you came all this way for that. Shion chan isn't working today. She didn't come yesterday either. The store manager behind the cash register apologized to us. This man was apparently Shion's uncle. Hey, wait. She didn't come yesterday? That can't be true, can it? Shion said she was heading to work as she left the library yesterday. When is she scheduled to come to work again? Katie kun Rena tugged at my sleeve. We don't have time to waste about asking when she'll be at work again. Rena turned toward the store manager. Excuse me, sir. We have important business we need to take care of at Shichan's house. Could you tell us where she lives? Important business? The store manager furrowed his brow, but I pushed him as well. Shion asked us to do something for her, but I don't know much about it. In desperation, I concocted a story that we don't know the details. Shion san told Chan told me not to give her address out to anyone. I know you're her friends, but I gave her my word. Nevertheless, the store manager wouldn't agree with us. But we can't turn back now. A person's life is at stake. It really needs to happen today. We need to see her and talk to her directly. Please. Rika-chan deeply bowed her head while desperately pleading to him. When the store manager saw that, he seemed to relent. He let out an exasperated sigh. <sighs> Alright. But don't let her know that I told you, okay? Understood. The store manager went back to his office. Then a short while later... He came back and handed me a memo containing Shion's address. Thank you very much. Thank you. I won't forget your kindness. That seems a little dramatic. The store manager scratched his head in embarrassment. By the time the store manager looked up, we were already gone. Dead on the spot, we passed out and died. <laughs> How the fuck is this gonna end is the thing. I mean, I, I feel like we're gonna get there... Shion and Satoko are gonna be dead, and then I don't fucking know from there. Shishibone City, Kamishiki. We traveled on foot while looking at the map and comparing it to the note. Eventually, we reached a classy, high-rise apartment on the outskirts of Okinomiya. The imposing entry made it clear this facility was only meant for wealthy people. The Sonozaki family sure is rich, huh? I took a look around. It seemed fitting for Shion to live in such a fancy apartment. Naturally, the Sonozaki family had the financial strength and power to match this place. But beyond that, 
I felt like the atmosphere of this bustling apartment seemed to strangely mesh with Xion's personality. However, there were no signs of any people near the apartment, and there were no children playing nearby. None of the residents had any laundry hanging from the veranda. It seemed like most of the apartments were empty. The whole area felt cold. I suddenly felt like I had no right to stand here, even if this place was part of Shion's everyday life. It says Sonozaki. This must be where Shion lives. I took a deep breath, then reached for the buzzer at the front door. The door suddenly swung open and smacked me in the forehead. Uh, or not. <laughs> oh, hi, Kasai. An unfamiliar man looked down at me. A man with an imposing presence, wearing dark clothes and sunglasses. I forgot he lives with her. I guess my theory's wrong. At a quick glance, I could tell this wasn't a man with a reputable occupation. I needed to be careful. Pardon me? I didn't expect someone to be there. The man politely lowered his head. Then, as the stranger began to walk away, Rena noticed him checking the Sonozaki mailbox and decided to call out to him. Excuse- No, wait, they don't share an apartment. They, they have two different apartments, I remember. Excuse me, is this where Shichan lives? Rena asked that timidly. That's right. But do you need something from Shion Sonozaki? How is this man related to Shion? No way. Could this be Shion's boyfriend? <laughs> it certainly didn't look like it. What a fucking stretch, bro. Is Shion here? Rikachan asked the man a question without hesitation. No. Shion san hasn't come home yet. Where'd she go? Well, that I don't know. Please excuse me, I'm in a hurry. The man casually said that and quickly started walking away from the apartment complex. Um, would it be okay for us to wait here for Shion-san? Feel free to. Who is this man? He's close enough to Shion that he can answer questions about her without hesitation. Could he be Shion's father? Either way, he seemed to have ties to the underworld. He was a dangerous man. In that case... We should wait here for Shichan. Maybe she hasn't come home from school yet. It can't be helped. Rena and Rikachan decided to take a seat in front of the entrance. The door was locked, so we couldn't get to the elevator unless a resident unlocked it for us. Me, Keiichi. Would you like a candy? Rikachan pulled a chocolate out of her bag. To be honest, I was in no mood to eat something sweet, but... Sure, I'll take one. I made up my mind and decided to sit next to them. And she never came back, because she's already dead, somewhere. I wonder how long we've been waiting. The sky was getting dark. Suddenly, I heard footsteps approaching, and immediately raised my head. When everyone noticed my reaction, we all stood up at once. Who is it? Maybe Shion's finally here? How should I act when I see Shion? The first thing I needed to ask was where she went, since she clearly wasn't going to her part-time job. And also about Satoko's whereabouts. At this point, we couldn't let her keep delaying the answer. We needed to hear it directly. I held my breath as I looked in that direction. However, the hope that Shion was heading home immediately washed away. That person looks far too big to be Shion. Maybe the man from earlier is coming back? It's a Weishi, isn't it? But we were quickly disappointed when we could make out the man's silhouette and hear his voice. Oh my! What are all of you doing in a place like this? <laughs> that voice. A chill ran through my entire body. I need to stay away from this guy. He's an enemy. He's our enemy. We meet again, Mayabara-san. Actually, I was just thinking of heading home. Keiichi kun Rena quickly chased after me. Rikachan also started walking away while wiping the dust off her skirt. I was looking for you, Mayabara san, Ryugu san. Oh my, it looks like you've got a new member today. What is the head of the Furude family doing here? <laughs> His voice disgusted me. I wanted to get out of here right away. 
acting like a know-it-all, like a savage beast, slowly killing the small animals in his path. Let's go, Rika-chan. I grabbed Rika-chan by the hand and started walking fast. Oishi made no effort to stop us, but he kept slowly walking in our direction. Xion-san still hasn't come back, huh? Where could she have gone? Maybe she's out shopping or something? I put on an unconcerned act and kept walking. However, isn't that strange? She hasn't come home in a long time. A very long time. Since the night of the festival. Since the night of the festival? My feet came to a halt. I couldn't bring myself to take another step. My legs wouldn't move, like they were frozen solid. What was he talking about? Didn't we all meet Shion at the library yesterday? That was Mion. So I was right, that was Mion. Well, it's strange, isn't it? She was working at her part-time job on the day of the festival, and we met face-to-face -face at the library yesterday. And yet she never went home. What on earth could that mean? She's staying at a friend's. That can't be true. Rena and I exchanged glances. We definitely met her yesterday. You saw her yourself, didn't you? Are you sure you're not mistaken? Believe me, I wish I was. Did you happen to see her scooter in the parking lot? Scooter? I wish he had a nasty, arrogant smile on his face. Then he slowly continued. Xion san travels everywhere on her scooter. Like when she traveled to Hinamizawa the day before yesterday. The paralysis binding my entire body grew even stronger. Shion took Satoko and brought her back here, no doubt about it. I think she probably went to the Hojo house then, right? But wait, how did Oishi know that Shion went to Hinamizawa the day before yesterday? Did Oishi already verify that Shion came back here on her scooter? Does this guy know everything? Impossible! That's ridiculous! How? All the blood in my body ran cold. If I panic here, I'll just be playing into his hands. Calm down. Calm down, Keiichi Mayabara! I snuck a quick glance at Rena and Rikachan. They were both nonchalantly staring at Oishi. These were my club members, after all. They've had plenty of opportunities to perfect their poker faces. Shichan went to Hinamizawa the day before yesterday? Rana calmly struck back. <laughs> I don't know either. It's just a hypothetical. However, I noticed a critical detail a little while ago. That scooter was the cause of my misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? I realized all too late that I was biting at Oishi's bait. I let the panic show on my face. Oh, my Abara-san, it seems you have an interest in my misunderstanding. Not really. Regardless of what you're thinking, none of that matters to us. I gave the strongest response I could muster. What kind of face am I making right now? Please, stay calm. Oishi seemed amused by something and let out a foo-hoo-hoo laugh. Even if you hadn't asked, I would have told you. That wasn't Shion Sonozaki's scooter. It was the same model, but the license number was registered in another prefecture. Do you understand what I'm getting at? I don't understand anything. I was so confused. Oishi was mocking me, no doubt about that. However, when I calmly considered the information Oishi was telling me, it raised a lot of questions. Shion Sonozaki's scooter wasn't here. That meant Shion never rode her scooter back here. Which in turn meant that Shion never brought Satoko here. At the very least, that meant the safest place to hide Satoko that Shion had referred to wasn't her apartment. It's either the Hojo household or the Sonozaki torture room. Then where did she go? Where did she take Satoko? Maybe... It's already too late for Satoko. Rika-chan's voice trembled as she squeezed that out. Too late for what? 
Rikachan, if you know something, tell me! What should I do? Where should we go? To find Satoko and Shion? At any rate, there was no point staying here. That much was self-evident. It was time to stop playing around with Oishi. Excuse me. I started walking again to get away from Oishi. Rena and Rikachan followed my lead. Okay, thank you! I'll wait here a little longer for Shion-san. Oishi's nonchalant voice clung to me from behind. Shut up, you filthy old man! I couldn't hide my frustration. In the depths of my heart, I was cursing at Oishi while riding my bike back to Hinamizawa. Should we check Satoko-chan's house? I simply nodded to Rena's suggestion. Besides, where else could we go? As I'd worried about Satoko's whereabouts, somewhere in my heart I'd assumed that she was in Shion's house. If she wasn't there, then the only other option was Satoko's house, the only one you guys could find. And yet, didn't Rikachan already tell us? There was nobody at the Hojo house. I had a bad feeling about this. Alarm bells were ringing inside my head. Don't go, Keiichi. You better not go to the Hojo house! There might be something there you're better off not seeing. But you're gonna do it anyway. Satoko. Shion. Where have you gone? Thoughts of desperation hounded me as we headed towards Satoko's house. Jesus fucking Christ. I might split this episode after all, because we're pushing two and a half hours. I thought I'd record for like half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. No, we're at 50 and no sign of being done. For this chunk of the video, at least. The setting sun illuminated the neighborhood in a bright red hue. The Hojo house was being swallowed by the dusk. It looked completely different from the time I came here with Shion. I quickly noticed that the path to the entrance was covered with in weeds and dust. It felt like this place had been abandoned by the flow of time. When Rena rang the doorbell, it echoed inside the house. I couldn't hear any other sounds coming from inside. There's nobody here. Rena put her hand on the doorknob and turned it vigorously. Clank, clank. The door was locked. Let's take a peek inside. We went around the side of the house. However, the curtains were closed, so we couldn't see inside. Well, I can't tell much about what's inside. What should we do? Rena pressed her face right up against the window to peer inside. We can't turn back now. There must be a clue. Even something minor would help. If only we could find some clue that pointed to Satoko and Shion's whereabouts. I carefully examined the exterior of the house. Were there really no traces? There had to be signs that the two of them came here. There were small marks on the walls and pebbles on the ground all around. It all looked perfectly natural, completely ordinary. The only thing that seemed abnormal was the dismal lighting from the setting sun. There was no point staring at that. I needed to focus on finding the two of them. Before I knew it, I had walked away from Satoko's house and towards the forest. The same forest where we were that night. I noticed something glimmering in the bushes. What could it be? I slowly approached. It was like a mirror or something. Shining a light at me that seemed to signal its presence. It's gonna be Shion's fucking scooter. Yep, I found a familiar scooter buried in the bushes. It looked a lot like Shion's scooter. I lifted it up and checked the plate number. No doubt about it. Shion hid her scooter right here. I had a bad feeling about this while running back towards Satoko's house. Keiji kun Rena was peering into the kitchen window, but quickly looked back at me. OUT OF THE WAY! I pulled off my tattered shirt and wound it around my right fist. Then I slammed it into the center of the window with all the strength in my body. The glass made a clamorous racket as it shattered. keiji kun what's going on all of a sudden? I could tell from the surprise in Rena's voice that she was frightened. But at this point, I didn't care anymore. 
The presence of that scooter implied that Shion and Satoko came here. Which means there's a chance they're still here! I thrust my hand through the broken window, undid the lock, and opened the window. The muggy, stagnant air immediately started flowing out of the room. We can get in from here! I rolled a trash can over to the window and used it as a stepping stone to climb inside. Rena and Rikachan gave me a dubious look, but they quickly followed behind me. I used the stainless steel sink in the Hojo family's kitchen as a foothold to lower myself down. This was breaking and entering, but at this point it was inevitable. The tatami mats creaked underfoot as I stepped into the living room. My heart rate was steadily climbing. Turn back now. After this point, there will be no turning back. Another part of my mind was shouting at me for even thinking such a thing. Head home already, Keiichi Mayabara! Don't come any closer! Was it my survival instinct? A sixth sense? Or just plain old fear? I couldn't let myself give in to fear. Something smells awful. Wonder what? I felt my socks were getting moist and damp. When I looked down at my feet, I noticed dark spots like coffee stains on the tatami mats. The tatami mats had absorbed a large amount of the jet black liquid and become unpleasantly damp. Wonder what that is? I could see an overturned coffee cup that looked dry. They were making breakfast, huh? Rena's voice was a little shaky. I could also make out a pile of dishes and old toasts on the corner of the tatami mat. Satoko always eats Japanese-style food in the morning. The morning can't officially start without rice and miso soup. Uh, you know, I've never had miso soup. I should try to go out of my way to do that sometime. Rikachan picked up a slice of bacon that had fallen next to the sliding door. Why is all this breakfast food scattered about? Did someone throw a temper tantrum in the middle of a meal? Tepe Hojo seemed like the only possible cause. But he was already dead. I picked up two coffee cups that had fallen down onto the tatami mat. Maybe this fancy western-style breakfast was something- Oh, that's Rena. <laughs> Maybe this fancy western-style breakfast was something Shichan made? I saw Shichan and was like, that's not Keiichi. <laughs> that might be the case. At the very least, it was clear that the two of them came here that night. And tried to have breakfast here. But the two of them must have left in the middle of breakfast. Which implied the two of them weren't here anymore. Oh, they're not here, alright. Is this odor the smell of the food? Is it? The fishy aroma from earlier came drifting in. Could this be the combined smell of old coffee and dried bacon? The nasty odor smelled like old garbage. The sliding door leading to the back room was open, open a crack. The smell seemed to be coming from back there. Rena quietly put her hand on the door. Don't open it. Once again, the voice in my heart stopped me from moving forward. I'll check out the other rooms. Maybe I was just being a coward. I turned my legs around and headed towards the bathroom. Wouldn't it be so fucking hysterical if he's like, Alright, I don't want to check in there because it's going to be bad. He opens the bathroom door and they're both dead in there. Slams the door. Alright, uh, they're not there. <laughs> But the next moment... Yeah! I heard a scream loud enough to burst my eardrums coming from behind. Okay, they were back there. Come on! It, this is already such a campy arc. You could have put them in the bathroom and that would have been funny. Don't check the suspicious smelly room. They're in the bathroom. The suspicious smelly room, it, it is just food. A scream of desperation. The kind that can only be emitted by those in abject horror. The smell drifted in from the room all at once. It was that fishy aroma. I started gagging as soon as it hit me. I mustered the courage to slowly look back. I could see Rena standing on the other end of the doorway. I found something, Keiji kun The back room was dyed red. And it wasn't from the sunset pouring in through the window. The walls lit by the vermilion sunset were scattered with rusty red stains. Xion was flopped down on a futon, and the futon was dyed red as well. But Xion was dressed in regular clothes instead of pajamas, and her shirt was tattered and covered in holes. 
I noticed a bloody kitchen knife laying on the ground right beside her, so Satoko killed her. Who on earth could have done this? <laughs> Rena stood perfectly still with her hands held to her mouth. She stood there trembling, with a face that simply couldn't comprehend the situation in front of her. And then... Oh, they're right next to each other. Great, so they're both dead. <laughs> I noticed a patch of disheveled hair hiding underneath Xion's body. Actually, that's on top of her. My hands trembled as I mustered the courage to move Xion's body aside. And I found Satoko curled up underneath her. When I moved the arm wrapped around Satoko's shoulders, her head fell with full force. In the awkward manner that a doll's head might move. <laughs> there were strange scars on Satoko's neck. Like, her throat was clawed out. I see. Okay, so yeah. So Satoko killed Shion, and then, uh, you know, Hinamizawa spoiled herself. How? How did this? Why? Why? Rena screamed again, and it brought me back to my senses. <laughs> Rena! Rena! Rena started grabbing things around her and throwing them. And screaming like crazy. Shi-chan! Sadako-chan! Shi-chan! Sadako-chan! Uh, okay, how many times are you gonna do it? <laughs> Let me compose myself again so I can voice it again. Shi-chan! Sadako-chan! Rena! Calm down, Rena! Why? Why? Why did they have to die? Oops. Why Shi-chan? And why Sadako-chan? No! It can't be true! Rena can't accept this! We were too late. Rika-chan's muttering query reached Rena's ears, because she turned to look while still screaming. Rika-chan, what do you mean? Rika-chan looked up at me with a despondent expression that told me she had given up on everything. I was surprised, because I've only ever seen adults make that facial expression. Keiichi... This has already been decided. Who decided this? Rika-chan shook her head. What is it, Rika-chan? If this was already decided, if you knew this was going to happen, why can't you explain it to us? Who decided this? What did they decide and for what reason? That moment I felt a chill run down my spine. Even if Keiichi and the others did something they shouldn't have done, None of that matters right now. The words Rika-chan told me at the schoolyard crept into my heart. Did you know, Rika-chan, that we did something we shouldn't have done? We killed a man on the night of Watanagashi. That was something that shouldn't have been done. Did that make Oyashiro-sama angry? And as a result, the two of them were killed on the day of Watanagashi? Is this Oyashiro-sama's... Curse? Rena seemed afraid to speak those words. Those who invoke Oyashiro-sama's anger will be cursed. The curse always falls on the day of Watanagashi. That was what Hinamizawa decided. That can't be! My voice was trembling. The curse of Oyashiro-sama doesn't exist! Someone decided to kill them under the guise of the curse! Right, Rena? Rena's eyes looked incredibly dark. The sight made me shiver. Rena, could it be? Do you know something? I don't know. I don't know anything. But this is something Rena will never forgive! You can't do something like this and blame it on Oyashiro-sama's curse and Watanagashi. It's absolutely unforgivable. Never. Rena will never forgive this! That's right. I'll never forgive the culprit either. I picked up the bloody, smelly knife that had fallen beside Shion. Even though my heart had taken a beating a while ago, it was finally regaining its strength. Standing in front of Shion and Satoko's bodies filled me with energy. I'll never, ever forgive the person who took something precious from us. Was I like only halfway through the arc and didn't know? Because it feels like you're setting up for even more. <laughs> I stood tall and found a new reason to live. Hatred. 
We fought to save Satoko. We fought more than anyone else to win back our precious, everyday, peaceful life. But even so, even so, in the end, something stood in our way. It's unforgivable! I'll never forgive the person who took from us what we hold dear! I'll kill you. I'll kill you! I'm absolutely going to kill you! I guarantee I'm going to kill the person responsible for this! For now, I stood with Rika-chan. We fluctuated between anger and sorrow as we stared down at Satoko and Shion's bodies. I expected something like this. But for it to end like this again... I've had enough! This is absurd! Oh, okay. What the fuck? How- How long is this fucking arc? This is fucking ridiculous! I thought it was like an hour and a half from being done and now you're setting up for more! Whatever, I'll still read. Why not? I'm committed. If I stop now, I'm gonna be five minutes from the end. So, yeah, watch. That fucking gambling, uh, digging a whole diamonds meme is gonna be real right now. Because there's only five minutes left in the video. Keiichi, please wake up. You'll be late, Keiichi. Mom was desperately calling out to me because I hadn't gotten up at the usual time. I'm getting up now. Even though I said that, I couldn't pull myself out of the futon. My body was so heavy, like lead. To be more accurate, it was my heart that felt heavy. A vision of Shion and Satoko lying in a pool of blood came back to me any time I closed my eyes. That bloody kitchen knife laying on the ground. As I recalled it now, it still felt like I was holding it in the palm of my hand. I'll take my revenge with this. I'll have my revenge on the person who took my peaceful, everyday life from me in an instant. Keiichi! When I opened my eyes, Mom was standing before me. Yeah? Feeling sick, huh? Do you need to stay home today? I- oops. I frequently skipped school back in my old town, but I've been in good health since I moved here. In the past, Mom would have just dragged me, smacked me and dragged me out of the futon. But today, she seemed really worried about me. Sorry. Let me rest today. I think I have a fever. I said whatever came to mind and tried to look apologetic. Oh, how unusual. Then I'll let Renachan know when she comes to pick you up. I'm sure Renachan will be disappointed you're staying home today. Mom said that cheerfully. She'd be disappointed, huh? Actually, I wonder what kind of face I'd make if I had to see Rena. What kind of face would Rena be making at a time like this? Probably 17,000 at once. My heart ached every time I thought of yesterday. That day where I was roaring like a ferocious beast at Satoko's house. Every time I told myself that I'd had no other choice, a feeling of emptiness sprang up. I have no idea what I'm supposed to live for now. Maybe clinging to my hatred is the best way to go on living. I'll get you some cold medicine. Mom left the room. Perhaps she'd grown tired of my silence. I don't need cold medicine. I wanted to say that, but I decided to keep quiet. Silence once again filled the room. The day we killed Tepe Hojo in the forest felt like so long ago. The world has changed since that day. When Satoko screamed in despair after witnessing me mercilessly beat Tepe Hojo to death. That was when it changed. I wonder why all of this happened. Who killed Shion? And why did Satoko have to die like that? With her throat torn apart? If Shion's story was accurate, it was similar to Tomotake-san's death. He clawed out his throat with his own fingernails, and he ultimately died from the excessive blood loss. The police suspected that Tomotake-san's death was a suicide. But if that was the case, then it suggested Satoko's death was also a suicide. Satoko committing suicide? Why? That's impossible. I once again recalled the scene of Satoko with her throat torn wide open, but you can't see it, just imagine it. 
However, it became completely unbearable after just two seconds. The terrible sight and repulsive bloody scent of Satago's corpse was burned into my memory. That's unusual. I wonder if Rena is out sick today too. Mom came back with the cold medicine. Normally, if I wasn't at our usual meeting place, Rena would worry about me and come to my house to check on me. My normal, everyday life? I never thought it was so fragile. I tossed the cold medicine in my mouth and drank a sip of water right away. There was nothing wrong with my body, but taking cold medicine wouldn't make it any worse. Alright, I'll go give the school a call. Behave yourself! Instead of responding, I simply closed my eyes. I wanted to sleep like this for the rest of my life. To get away from everything. If I could just have a pleasant dream where I played and had club activities with Satoko, Shion, Rena, Mion, and Rika-chan forever, I wouldn't need anything else. That was all I wanted. I softly begged for it. Not sure if it was thanks to the cold medicine or not, but before I knew it, I fell asleep. Ring. 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 The phone was ringing. Ring. Ring. I guess mom went out. And I guess dad is out too. Where could they have gone? Ring. Ring. The phone kept ringing. Non-stop. I was getting sick of it, but I gave up. I was in no mood to listen to a telemarketer's poor sales pitch right now. They're trying to reach mom or dad, but I guess they're both out. Come on, just leave me alone. Ring! Ring! The caller was far too persistent. It caused the lingering unease in my heart to gradually grow stronger. I didn't know why, but I just had a feeling that the person on the other end of the phone would deliver me even more bad news. My Nope. Nope. Not dealing with that. I headed downstairs. I stood there and watched the phone ring for a while. If I pick up that phone, another wave of unfortunate events will be unleashed. I thought that for a second, but the next moment I picked up the receiver. The atmosphere grew tense as I heard a very faint voice on the other end of the phone. Who is it? As I thought that, I tried to say something, but just then I heard the other person's voice. Fuck off. <laughs> Hello? Hearing that voice made all the blood in my body run cold. Yes? Oh, thank goodness! I finally got through! This is Kei-chan, right? Impossible. I thought back nostalgically as I heard a lovely, familiar voice. And the owner of that voice was Shion, who should already be dead. Sheesh, I thought you'd never pick up. When I asked Sis, she said you were off school today. So what on earth happened? Shion was talking in her usual cheery tone. What are you doing, Shion? Yesterday, you were dead, right? Kei-chan? Is everything alright? Well, this is blatantly, obviously Mion now. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Seems I've caught a cold today. I tried to keep the conversation calm while assessing my opponent's attitude. A dead person was calling me. I desperately pondered the meaning of that while listening to the bright voice coming in through the receiver. Are you feeling okay? Sheesh. Were you, were you already in bed sleeping with your stomach out? I'll be alright. <laughs> I never do something like that. What the fuck does that even mean? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but, Kei-chan, you do sound like you need some sleep. Maybe we should lie down together? Our meaningless conversation continued. I tried to be cheery and tried to stay calm as I spun together whatever words I could muster, completely ignoring the fact that she was just flirting with me. Sure, I'm fine with that. But if you're next to me, you'll keep me up all night. What are you saying? Unlike you, Kei-chan, I'm a gentle sleeper. Yeah, right. In reality, you'd be kicking and shoving me all night and claim you didn't remember any of it when you woke up. You know that, right? Kei-chan, you're terrible! Maybe you're not entirely wrong, but that's going too far! Well, should we try it to find out if it's true? Yeah, this is such a fan-servicey arc, I swear. 
Self-indulgent, rather. Shippy. It's a very shippy arc. I'll have to decline. <laughs> this was a game of catch. Throwing meaningless words back and forth to pass the time. When I realized that, I stopped laughing. <laughs> Xion. Yes? Who am I really talking to right now? Rather, maybe I should be asking. Who was that corpse at Satoko's house? Is something wrong, Kei-chan? No, it's nothing. Anyway, did you need something? You left a message on my answering machine, didn't you? Answering machine? Right. You said it was urgent and you needed to ask something. The fuck? Is there a third? Is it? Is this peon? Is this peon? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yesterday, Rena, Rikachan, and I were all desperately searching for Shion together in an effort to locate Satoko. Oh. You called again, but they, they didn't say so. So this is still Mion, I guess. It's crazy that I was already forgetting something like that. I banged my head with my fist to sharpen my senses. Kei-chan, are you alright? Have you taken any cold medicine? Do you need me to go over there? No, I'm fine. I took some cold medicine earlier. On the chest, side, stomach, back, neck, and legs, Shion was shedding blood from all over her body while lying on the floor at Satoko's house yesterday. And Satoko was laying there too, with her throat torn apart like it was ripped open. Could all of that have been a hallucination? Could the two of them still be alive and well somewhere? Was I mistaken in thinking I saw the both of them? Well, if you don't need anything else, I have to get going to my part-time job, okay? Shion. Yes? Yesterday, did you go to your part-time job like usual? Come on, Kei-chan. What are you saying? Of course I did. And did you go home afterwards? Of course. Please, don't imply I'm some sort of juvenile delinquent. <laughs> so you did then? Yes, I did. So you did then. The silence continued. If she went home yesterday, wouldn't someone have seen her? Oishi was supposed to be waiting in front of her house, right? Didn't that seem unusual? And what happened to Satoko? Was she really about to head to Angel Mort? Did she go yesterday too? Why would she lie about that? Even though there were a lot of things I wanted to ask, she'd probably dodge all of my questions. Alright, I'll drop off now if you don't have anything else. Get well soon. Please wait! I immediately began squeezing the receiver tight. Yes? I just remembered. About the weapons. Weapons? On the night when Tepe was killed. Shion, did you bring the weapons home with you? Yes. So what? Shion responded like it was perfectly natural. My heart was racing. Shion wasn't responsible for weapons disposal. Rena was. Well, Rena was saying we should move them to our secret location. Oh, is that so? But it's already taken care of. I threw them away in a place nobody will ever find them. Well, that's no good, because we may need to use them once more. What are you saying? My heart was beating wildly. Sorry, I can't say over the phone. Do you think we can meet up after this? I run his hideout. The garbage mountain. Huh? Right now? The police are starting to suspect us. Then the other end of the receiver went silent. Shion? Tell me you're willing to come. If you're going to continue using Shion's name. Understood. Then I need to get going now. Okay, I see how this arc ends then. Then she hung up. Shion is coming with weapons she couldn't have possibly taken home. I'm sure Rena will be at the Garbage Mountain today, too. If Rena didn't go to school, I'm sure she'll be over there. I had no grounds for that, but I was convinced. I changed my clothes and put on my shoes. Then I grabbed an empty bag, hid the thing I found in the kitchen inside of it, and then left the house. What thing you found in the kitchen? A, a fucking knife? Didn't you already still have the knife? That... Satoko used? Evening had already fallen by the time I reached the garbage mountain at the dam construction site. 
As I parked my bike, I looked for signs of Renna's presence. Although I couldn't see Renna, I noticed her bike mixed in with the scrap. Oops. I carefully watched my step as I descended the garbage slope. What have I been doing all day today? I skipped school and spent the day hiding in bed to escape reality. I got a phone call from Shion, who was supposed to be dead, and I invited her here. It all felt so unreal. None of it was in line with my everyday thoughts. And what remained was a set of unbelievable facts. A person who couldn't possibly be alive somehow was. And a person who ought to be here was dead. Keychan! When I turned around, I saw Shion coming down the garbage slope. Shion, who the hell are you? <laughs> Felt like I had an idea what the answer was. Shion turned to me with a bright, innocent smile. No, that's not Shion. You're... Mion, aren't you? Huh? What are you talking about, Keichan? Please, look closely. It's me, Shion. What's the big idea? What's gotten into you all of a sudden? Did something happen? Shion just stared blankly at me. My confidence was wavering. Is it possible that this is actually Shion? The Shion standing before me was staring at me with her eyes open wide. In my mind, those eyes overlapped with the lifeless eyes of the Shion I found dead at Satoko's house yesterday. The corpse I saw yesterday definitely had the same face as this person. So the person who was supposed to be dead speaking to me was a living contradiction. <coughs> I swear to god, this arc is so unreasonably long. Impossible! The person standing in front of me can't possibly be Shion! Shion is... already dead. Huh? Shion. No. Mion. Audibly gasped. So you... are actually Mion. Mion's eyes darted in every direction. She held a hand up to her mouth to hide the look of dismay on her face. Shion is dead? What do you mean? Her voice was trembling. From fear and the awful truth she was about to hear. STOP IMITATING SHION ALREADY! Why did you deceive us? That's all I want to know. I... I'm... I'm sorry. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Mion immediately started apologizing. She slipped on her footing and knocked over some cans on the ground as she knelt down and pressed both her hands together. You don't have to apologize. It won't make a difference at this point. D you and Renna have been acting weird for a while. And I need water. Okay. So, uh, I didn't mean to deceive you, you know? You don't need to say anything about that. I just want to know why you're impersonating Shion. I... I'm... Sorry. I was... I was starting to think this was going to turn into Satoshi all over again. Satoshi? Satoshi. Satoko's older brother. The one who disappeared and left Satoko behind. Satoko's Nini. Right before Watanagashi, you, Rena, and Shion were all meeting up to plan something, right? So I was getting concerned that there was more going on. And wondering... If you didn't consider me a friend anymore. You were intentionally keeping secrets from me. At the time, it made me feel a little lonely. So I tried calling Shion to ask what she was planning. I tried calling, but I couldn't ask anything. It seemed like Shion didn't trust me. Felt like she wouldn't talk to me. But I was starting to feel concerned. Honestly... I was really worried about you and everyone else, Keichan. And then, after Watanagashi was over, and Tepe Hojo was gone, Satoko and Shion both disappeared. Mion raised her eyebrows as she anxiously looked up at me. I don't understand your story, Mion. You impersonated Shion because you wanted to be our friend? I couldn't understand it at all. No! You've got it wrong, Keichan! I'm sorry! 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stop apologizing. It's meaningless. Please, Kei-chan. Don't look at me with those eyes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Knowing Chion's personality, I was worried that maybe she was the one who killed Tepe. And that's why Shion ran away. It disappeared. She must have deduced from our stories that all three of us were involved in Tepe's murder. So when Shion ran off alone, I thought it would be best to create an alibi for her. So I started pretending to be Shion. That's all there is to it. Please believe me. No more lies, Michan. Rena! Before I realized that, Rena was standing behind Mion. Hi. Mion's eyes fixated on the massive hatchet Rena was holding. Oh, great. Hey, Michan. Your story doesn't add up. Why did you have to kill Satoko-chan, too? Oh, yep, yeah, this is exactly what I thought was happening. Satoko? Satoko was dead, too? Why? No way. How? Don't play dumb, you liar! Rena swung her hatchet down. It let out a loud clang as it sliced into the hood of a car by her feet. That was a dirty thing you did, Michan. And you're still playing dirty now. You've got some nerve to say you were trying to protect Shi-chan when you were the one who killed her. And the reason you pretended not to notice all of Satoko-chan's suffering was because you were planning to kill her on the day of Watanagashi, right? Rena, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you're saying at all. Don't play dumb! She wanted to be our friend! Don't make me laugh. We were never friends to begin with, were we? Rena? Mion looked up at me like she was begging. However, all I could do was coldly gaze back at her. Mion, what you've done can never be taken back. It was all the curse, wasn't it? Oyashiro Samas. The Sonozaki family made it all happen, right? The curse of Oyashiro Sama. Keijon! You're all acting so weird! What are you talking about? I don't understand any of it! You plan to eradicate the entire Hojo family from the start. That's why you killed Santako chan You're wrong! Wrong! It wasn't me! I've never even thought of doing something like that to Santako! That's enough, Mion! The more you deny it, the more it sounds like a downright lie. You killed Satoko, and you killed Shion for trying to defend Satoko. Did you have a reason to kill Tomatake-san and Takano-san too? You're wrong! Wrong! All wrong! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Tears began falling from Mion's eyes. Mion clapped both her hands together and bowed while sobbing profusely. Curse of Oyashiro Sama. You didn't want to carry it out, did you? But it was a direct order from the Sonozaki family, so you had no choice. Why. why is this. what. what went so wrong? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's unfortunate, Michan, that you were caught in the middle of this. Keiji kun and I were next, weren't we? Your next targets, that is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shut up. Shut up. I took out the kitchen knife I hid in the bag. The knife that was lying beside Satoko and Shion yesterday. Yeah, why'd you find... Why'd you f say you found it in the kitchen? The one that spilled the blood of my precious friends. Hey, John. Mion gasped as she opened her wise eyed in despair. I'm sorry. 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 Fuck! I couldn't make it. Hey, Keiichi, forgive her already. She's apologized enough, hasn't she? She did something that can never be taken back. But even so, forgive her, because this won't bring the two of them back. Mion's face was drenched with tears. That miserable face was the same Mion who always smiled about club activities. In those days, 
We were all around Satoko, and everyone was smiling together. The yellow one is probably broccoli, and the blue one is cauliflower, but the green one is... Uh... Uh... Oh my! Looks like it's a home economics lesson! Well, Satoko, what's this? Mion used her chopsticks to pick up a little green morsel wrapped in bacon. Uh, that's a spare... Mm. I held Rikachan's mouth closed. This is just a Tatari Garoshi scene. Uh, uh, um, uh, the yellow one is cauliflower. Uh, no, the green one is cauliflower. Well, which is it? Hmm? I know it. I know. Then answer. I know this. I know this. <laughs> Satoko cried out, unable to bear it any longer. When Rena saw that, she held her head and pinched her cheeks. <laughs> that was our everyday life. When a salty taste entered my mouth, I realized I was crying. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mion was still apologizing by my feet. As the dusk began to settle in, the cries of the Higurashi grew even louder. The wind had gotten a lot cooler. It seemed like good weather for everyone to play together. Michan, I'm sorry. Honestly, I didn't want to do this. You'll understand that, right? Okay, so I get the feeling specifically what's going to happen is that either Rena or Keiichi is going to kill Mion, either Rena or Keiichi is going to scratch their throat out in despair, and the other one is going to follow suit. I would assume Rena goes first, but... Could be Keiichi. I don't know. Rena tightly gripped her hatchet. Her cheeks were soaking wet. Rena was crying too, without making a sound. Mion. I clenched the kitchen knife I was holding. In the same moment that Rena swung her hatchet, I rushed in with the kitchen knife. Oh, okay, both of them. I felt like I could hear Mion's cheerful voice mixed in with the groans of pain. Okay, <laughs> John, this doesn't suit you at all. What do you want to do for today's club activity? Don't forget about the punishment game. Maybe I just didn't want to hear Mion's final words. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mion's voice echoed inside my head and synchronized with my own feelings. Maybe I was the one who wanted to apologize. Sorry I'm laughing. I just pictured a Weishi standing by the trash heap watching this happening. Eating a donut, like, hmm. All right, well, this settles everything. I should probably stop this. Hmm. Mm. Think frosted. <laughs> Mion. I just wanted to regain our happy days. It wasn't supposed to end this way. Nobody, nobody wanted this. Apple fritter. Yummy, yummy. Hmm. Oh, chapter transition? Ah, oh, I guess I missed my time. Sour cream glaze. The night was approaching. Oh, <laughs> he's still standing there. As the sun went down, only a little light remained on the mountaintops. Both the fishy smell of blood lingering in the air and Mion's voice still ringing in my ears, felt like they were about to drift off in the sky. Mion's long hair fluttered in the wind and struck my feet. Mion was kneeling with Mion's head in her lap, stroking Mion's hair. People really do just die in an instant, don't they? Rena gazed at Mion's lifeless lips and spoke in a nonchalant tone, in a voice that sounded like she had already forgotten what she had done with her own hands. Nichan. She was the first person to talk to me after I moved here. The people of Hinamizawa had a strong bond with one another, but tended to treat outsiders coldly. Even though Rena was originally from Hinamizawa, she moved away when she was little, so the villagers still treated her like an outsider when she returned. Come to think of it, was it any different for me? Maybe it was because of Dad's strong personality, 
Or maybe it was because I made some good friends at school. But I was fortunate enough that it never caused any issues. However, Mom had to regularly interact with the villagers face to face. So it was probably really hard on her in the beginning. Rena had some issues back at her old school before moving here. But since you're supposed to read this before Sumi Horoboshi, I won't explain them here, right? My mental health was in poor shape back then. I thought that moving here would give me a fresh start. But it was so different from the town I lived in before that I didn't know what to do. I was really nervous on my first day of school. And then I met Michan. Michan was the first person to talk to Rena after coming here. They call you Rena? That's a nice name. Feel free to tell me if you have any problems, okay? Because in this village, even if you try to keep something secret, it'll get out pretty quickly. Don't look so nervous. Everything will be okay. Leave everything to me. Rana was having some family troubles, but we'll explain those more in the next chapter. But she never pressured me to talk about it, so I won't hear. Some people apparently tried to spread nasty rumors about Rena's family, but... Michan made sure I never heard any of them. Going to school every day, making friends with Rika-chan, Satoko-chan, and everyone else. When I was with Michan, all my troubles seemed so insignificant. Michan gave Rena the courage to stand on her own two feet in this town. Rena let out a brief sigh while gently stroking Mion's hair. The smell of Mion's shampoo tickled my nose as the breeze carried it over. Somehow, despite coming from a corpse, it was a lovely scent. She was so kind. She was such a reliable friend. So why, Keiichi Kun? Why did it have to happen like this? Rena twirled Mion's hair around her finger as she asked me that. Why did this happen? I didn't know either. I couldn't answer Rena's question. There was no way I could answer that. So I simply bowed my head and remained silent. Mion's hair slipped through Rena's fingers in a gentle arc. Where did things go wrong? When did the gears start spinning out of control? Did Rena do something wrong? How did this happen? Rena went on, talking to herself. I felt the same way. I had mixed feelings as I gazed at Mion's closed eyes, knowing they would never open again. Just then, I thought I caught a glimpse of one of her eyelashes moving. <gasps> I stared intently at Mion's eyelashes. How did it come to this? Hey, Keiichi-kun? Keiichi-kun? There was no way Mion could open her eyes. She's not going to move. Because Mion is already dead, right? I just kept staring at her closed eyes. It, that's called wind, Keiichi. Lovely Mion. She was our friend. But Mion killed Shion and Satoko. Then impersonated Shion while trying to kill us. In order to carry out the curse of Oyashiro-sama. There was no point in figuring out who failed or what went wrong. Oyashiro-sama's existence was the cause of all the problems in this exist in this village. It was all Oyashiro-sama's fault. Oyashiro-sama was the one manipulating Mion. Keiichi-kun, are you okay? You're looking a little pale. Should we head home soon? Yeah. Rena quietly slid Mion's head off her knees and onto the ground. I guess I was wrong. How much more is there? I took a deep breath and slowly got up. As I got up, dust floated onto Mion's beautiful hair. A person who was alive just this morning was lying here dead, lying unprotected on this mountain of trash, unable to resist the dust collecting on her. I felt sorry for Mion. It was Oya Shirosama's meddling that got her killed. How unfortunate. We were the ones who killed her, no doubt about it. But it didn't feel like this was a matter of who'd directly done the deed. I don't think we made any mistakes. This was 
Neon's destiny. I said that, trying to convince myself of that. Mion was just a pawn of Oyashiro-sama. She was destined to die. It couldn't be helped. It couldn't be helped. Destiny? Mi-chan was destined to die like this? Rena weakly lifted her head in response to my comment. Okay, they're gonna start arguing and they're gonna kill each other. That's what's gonna happen, right? She wiped the blood from Mion's cheeks with her slender fingertip, then turned to me with a cruel light in her eyes. Yeah. Then, a chill ran down my back. Rena, what were you thinking just now? The more time passed, the less I understood her. What is she thinking? Then I remembered. Rena was the kind of person who could put on a cheerful smile right after killing a person. But right now, her face looks so sad. So what is she thinking? As I pondered the best way to ask Rena what she meant, she interrupted with words of her own. Let's go home. Yeah, or I guess not. I lost my chance. What's wrong, Keiichi-kun? You look a little absent-minded. Hope you feel better. Rena gave me her usual smile while trying to encourage me. See, what's weird here... I, I feel like shit has to end right here at this set piece. Or else, it's stupid. Like, genuine, fucking insane stupid, you know? Like, incredulously, incredibly stupid. Because otherwise, if they just leave and they die their own death somehow, because they're both obviously gonna fucking die. Mion's body is right there! And Oishi's standing on the edge. Hello! <laughs> See? He's right there! I don't know where the fuck Rika is. Oh, there she is. She's standing on the cliff watching this. Hi. I don't want to be here. I'm jumping off the cliff because this fragment sucks. Flat. Oh, there goes Rika. Oishi didn't see it. <laughs> Whatever. It has to end here somehow. Otherwise, I'd be really dumb. So please don't be stupid. Rena gave me her usual smile while trying to encourage me. The only way you could not... The only way you could get away with not ending it here... Sorry, I hit my mic. Is if you hide Mion's body. Otherwise, that's stupid. I'm feeling okay, aren't I? That defensive answer was the best I can muster. I was frustrated that Rena had taken the lead in this conversation. But as long as I didn't know her true feelings, I couldn't afford to say something foolish that would only stir up a hornet's nest. I stealthily looked over at Rena's expression, desperately trying to get a handle on her real intentions. What was that face you made a little while ago? What were you thinking? No way, Rena. Were you thinking about me? Rena maintained the smile on her face while slightly tilting her head to the side. That's when you run. I see! If Keiichi-kun is feeling okay, that's good! Because if you were feeling unwell, Rena would be sad too. But if I wasn't feeling fine, then what? If I wasn't feeling fine, would that cause problems for Rena? We still have, you know, the untied thing of the whole Wow, his blood is so red line from like five hours ago now. <laughs> If you're fine, that's good. I think so, I think so. Rena made a sweet smile. Even I could tell that smile was forced. The two of us are accomplices in the murders of Tepe and Mion. Murder is a sin that we'll have to carry on our backs for the remainder of our lives. That's why we'll have to get along for the rest of our lives, even if it means maintaining a superficial relationship on the outside. And yet, just what on earth was Rena up to? Feelings of distrust toward Rena were bubbling up. Well, let's get going. Rena rose to her feet. I noticed a brief glimmer near the hem of her skirt. It looked like she was adjusting the hem of her skirt, but I caught a glimpse of something hidden behind her back. The hatchet. And then she swung it into Keiichi's head and he died. The same hatchet that drew Mion's blood earlier? The blood in my body receded as I began to understand what that meant. Why, Rena? Why are you hiding that hatchet from me? I looked down at Mion on the ground. 
The blood flowing out had completely dried up. Renna, are you planning to kill me with that hatchet too? What would be the purpose of that? I mean, that's obviously what's gonna happen, but what would be the purpose of that? I glanced over at Renna once more, but she was just staring vacantly at Mion's body. Even so, that hatchet Renna kept hidden was the only thing that spoke to her true feelings. The burden of being an accomplice will last a lifetime. It was a heavy bond, stronger than marriage. See, such a particular, deliberate word choice there. Just imagining it, imagining it made me feel dizzy. Renna gently moved her hands. Was she moving the hatchet? I swallowed a gulp of saliva. Come to think of it, where did I put that kitchen knife I was carrying until a little while ago? I looked around, but I couldn't see it. I kept looking and looking, but oddly enough, I couldn't see the kitchen knife anywhere. When I noticed Renna gazing in my direction, I quickly looked up towards the sky to hide my vexation. We can't leave Michan here, can we? Oh, are we doing this? My wandering gaze halted when I heard Renna's stern voice. We can't leave Mion here? You mean moving the corpse? Why? Nobody ever comes here. It's safer than anywhere else, isn't it? No. I couldn't comprehend what Renna was thinking when she said that. Where should we take her? I carefully tried to keep my dismay from coming out. Maybe she wanted to bury her somewhere like we did with Tepe Hojo? Was there a chance she wanted to kill me too? We should lay Michan to rest near Satoko-chan and Shichan. Renna spoke to Mion in a gentle voice. It was an affectionate voice, like a mother addressing her child. Yeah. Renna's voice made me feel better for a moment. I felt ashamed of myself for doubting her. And then... But was Renna truly speaking from the bottom of her heart right there? And then... After some internal debate, I decided she was lying. And then... Renna was the kind of person who could lie without flinching. And then... Up until now, after killing Tepe and after killing Mion, I noticed something a little off. And then... Renna was the sort of person who could skillfully wear one face while concealing another. So it would be better not to carefully trust everything Renna says. And then... My heart started to feel lighter as I pondered that. Just cut to the part where she stabs you, bro! I started to relax after admitting to myself that I shouldn't trust Renna. If that's the case, it makes things easy. Just don't trust Renna. I need to consider my next move with that premise in mind. It was far easier than being lost in a cycle of wanting to trust her but unable to do it. Shion and Satoko should still be resting in the Hojo house. When the police get around to investigating the house, their investigation might derail under the assumption that Mion was killed there. Despite how compassionate Renna looked, my mind was thinking meticulously, so I nodded to her in a manner that made it seem like her kindness got through to me. You're right. Mion would be more at ease together with everyone else. I had a distant look in my eyes while staring vacantly at Mion. Her neck was bent at a sad angle, so I looked down and bit my lip in regret. The next struggle for survival had already begun. I held my breath while waiting for Rena's reaction. Not sure if she noticed it or not, but she started to wheel walk completely silently. And then? What? What the fuck? There's no way you're transporting the body through the entire fucking town! The yard in front of Rena's house was packed full of junk, like always. It was rather far from Satoko's house. We came here to pick up the push cart so we could carry Mion to Satoko's house. Hmm. Now, where is that cart? Rena sifted through a pile of junk while searching for the cart. The yard was almost as cluttered as the garbage mountain we were at earlier. We used that cart the other day to bring that statue we excavated here, didn't we? I thought so, but I stopped myself before saying anything. This entire area was packed with items that Rena collected on a daily basis. Well, if rumors ever started going around calling this the garbage house, I couldn't exactly object. I pretended to help Rena search for the cart while carefully searching the area. The house seemed awfully quiet. I wonder if anyone is home. Though I was looking around restlessly, my eyes stopped when Rena called out to me in a sharp voice. Keiichi-kun, can I get you some tea or anything? 
Rena looked back at me while searching the back of the shed. Uh, no, I don't need anything. My throat was dry, but I wanted to avoid giving Rena an opportunity to escape from my line of sight. I still wasn't sure what Rena was thinking, so I needed to carefully monitor her movements. G guys, kill each other already, because I couldn't trust Rena. Hmm, so you don't need any, huh? I just thought it would be nice to make some tea. You really don't need any. Is there a chance that you don't trust Rena? Even though Rena should have been standing in the back of the shed, I found her standing right beside me, glaring at me with a horrifyingly distrusting look in her eyes. What is it? If I didn't trust you, who could I trust? <laughs> I tried to laugh it off, but my face struggled to play along. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> Rena believes in Keiichi Kun too. Definitely. No matter what happens. Rena's facial expression didn't change at all. I trust you too. I wanted to say that, but I couldn't get the words out of my throat. I found the cart. It was hard to find because it was buried. Take a look. Rena banged on the rails of the cart. It was covered in a blue tarp. I see. Then let's get going. I'll pull it. I offered to pull the cart instead of Rena. Suddenly, Rena's shoulders twitched prominently enough that I could notice it from 50 centimeters away. And during that time frame, the blue tarp over the cart seemed to move slightly. Rena immediately pushed the tarp down, but I clearly saw it. I saw a familiar looking kitchen knife right next to Rena. It was the knife I was looking for a while ago. The same knife that sucked the blood from Satoko and Shion, then stabbed Mion in the heart. I was looking everywhere for it, but I had no idea that Rena was secretly carrying it. Rena had somehow found it, and secretly tucked it away without me realizing. Ah, that's okay. Rena can handle it alone just fine. Once we get Michan, you can help out. Rena shamelessly donned her cute mode. It was painful to look at. Rena, what do you plan on stabbing with that kitchen knife? Let me rephrase that. Who do you plan on stabbing? Katie Kim, what's wrong? You've got a scary look on your face. Is something on your mind? Just your imagination. Let's get going. As I said that, I quickly surveyed the area. It looked like Rena was hiding her hatchet earlier. Where did it go? Rena brought it home with her, right? Was she preparing the knife because she didn't want to use the hatchet? That's too bad, Rena. I'll be the one to grab that hatchet. My eyes stopped on the shadow of the shed. I could see the blade of the hatchet hidden there, and there's your trick. You're about to get stabbed. I'll push it from behind. I moved around to the back of the cart without saying anything more. Hey, Katie can. If you push too hard, it'll start pointing in the wrong direction. Rena started walking forward, pulling the cart to straighten it out. She adjusted the angle of the cart so it was no longer facing the shed. I swiftly grabbed the hatchet from the shadow of the shed and gently set it down in the cargo bay without making a sound. And on the other end side of the cart, I caught a glimpse of the knife Rena had hidden earlier. There's nothing in this cart, but it's still pretty heavy. Rena quickly turned back and pulled the tarp down. Did she notice something? There's no point hiding it now. I already know there's a kitchen knife hidden there. The question is, why? Maybe it just feels heavier than usual because you're tired. Don't push yourself too hard, Rena. Are you sure you're okay? I can take over at any time if you need me to, okay? I even surprised myself with how gentle my voice came out. At this point, I know Rena has the kitchen knife. But Rena doesn't know that I have the hatchet. That fact brought me a small amount of relief. I was in the superior position here. Or at least I should be. <clears throat> God. It's alright. You're awfully kind today, Keiichi Kun. Huh? Maybe I should spoil, the spoil you then, huh? Huh? Rena looked back at me while pulling the cart with a sweet smile, but her eyes weren't smiling. Depends on your definition of spoil. I flashed her a big smile. 
You're so mean, Keiji Kun. Huh. Our shadows melted into the dusk. This was a man matter of survival. This was the only way to break the heavy shackles of our collusion. Kill before being killed. That's one of the basic rules of survival. If Rena is willing to go that far, I'm prepared to fight. And I'm definitely going to win. As I decided that, I gazed at the bulge on the tarp where the hatchet was hiding underneath. And then... WHAT THE FUCK?! DUDE! HOW LONG IS THIS CHAPTER?! How fucking long is this art? I heavily, heavily misjudged it. If I had literally stuck it out, not only would I have been reading for, uh, three and a half fucking hours now, one, but two, I would be hella late for work. I had about an hour left, I would be 54 minutes late right now, and starving. Jesus Christ. I'm definitely splitting this recording, but... I, I gotta finish it now, Jesus. I'm probably gonna split it exactly where I split it. <laughs> you know, with actually reading it. I grabbed Mion's heavy body by the shoulders, and Rena grabbed her by the feet as we loaded her into the cart. Then we covered her with the blue tarp. Right before that, I discreetly moved the hatchet to the ground, all the while praying that Rena didn't notice. When I raised my head to take a look around, Rena was simply staring at the ground. We pretended not to notice one another. Let's get going. I'll pull the cart this time. You can push from the back, Rena. Sure. Got it. Her response sounded mechanical. Her voice was inorganic, devoid of any emotion. I casually turned around while Rena was looking the other direction. Then I picked up the hatchet and gently tucked it under the tarp. Pushing now. <sighs> The cart nearly crashed into me as it started to move. We slowly pulled the cart carrying Mion away from the garbage mountain. I suddenly remembered the day that Rena and I brought the statue back. I made an offhanded joke at the time about how it felt like we were pushing around a dead body, but I never thought I'd actually be transporting a corpse this way. And to top it off, it was Mion's body. This was turning into a farce. <clears throat> God. The extreme force I had to project into my hands to pull the cart signified the weight of Mion's existence. I fought back the urge to cry as I walked to Satoko's house with heavy footsteps. I spent the whole time praying that we wouldn't run into anyone. What was Rena thinking back there while pushing the cart with our stiff cargo? I'm confident. At least until we reach Satoko's house. There's no risk of her doing something with that kitchen knife. Probably. I cautiously looked back, hoping to discern something of the thoughts Rena kept locked in her heart. Rena didn't look back at me. She kept looking downward, concentrating solely on the task of walking forward, one step at a time. Right. Seeing Rena's emotionless expression was unbearably disheartening. When did this happen? My stomach churned because there were too many people whose thoughts I couldn't comprehend. What was Rena thinking right now? I can't trust anyone. It was a hopeless thing to say, but I couldn't allow anyone to make things worse. I wanted so badly to talk to Mion, who was lying dead in the cargo rack. If she was dead, there was some peace to be gained from that. She'll never have a sudden change of heart and try to kill me. Hey, Mion, please listen to me. Honestly, I'm afraid of Rena. At this point, I felt it was safe to tell Mion anything. It was such an ironic relationship, where we couldn't trust each other until one of us was dead. Does that really qualify as a trusting relationship? Kei John, are you an idiot? Of course it's not a trusting relationship. It's not friendship or anything. I felt like I could hear Mion's voice. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna finish this tomorrow. <laughs> Cut! And I'm back again. It is now, uh, New Year's Day. I work at 2.30. It is currently noon. Do I have enough time? I fucking better. Let's read. 
That's true. If I couldn't bring myself to trust someone while they were still alive, that didn't sound like friendship at all. I do remember where we are, so that that's good. But don't worry, because this old man is rooting for you, Kei-chan. Because I'm your friend, no matter what. Mion's cheerful voice called out to me over and over. Good luck, Kei-chan. Do your best, Kei-chan. Keep going, Kei-chan. I stared back at Rena as she walked forward with a blank expression. Even though Mion was lying dead under the tarp, it felt like she was encouraging me. How selfish of me. Only finding my courage after a dead person encouraged me. Even though Rena and I were actually the ones who killed Mion, my ears were ringing. It couldn't be helped. I had no choice. I started feeling sick. I didn't want to find myself in a situation where I needed that concealed hatchet. And I didn't want Rena to have an opportunity to use her concealed knife. Honestly, I didn't want to kill anyone else. I wanted to have lots of friends. To laugh and cry together with all my living friends. All two of them. Wherever Rika is. What are you thinking? Don't lose heart. You swore an oath. I sighed and shook my head. The time for those sweet dreams has already passed. Open your eyes, Keiichi Mayabara. The era of playing around and having a pleasant time with your perfect group of friends is already a thing of the past. Kill before being killed. Otherwise, you'll get killed. That's all there is to it. As I stared at Rena's slender figure, my heart slowly filled with wretched, murderous intent. Once again, the voice of the crickets filled my ears. Shut up. Leave me alone. The more I wished for their silence, the louder the crickets cried out, like they were trying to criticize me. We managed to travel from the garbage mountain to the Hojo house without running into anyone. The surrounding area was completely swallowed by the dusk. Everything around me looked gray. I was a bit surprised to notice that the kitchen window was still broken. What? D did you think someone was just going to be walking by and be like, Oh, I should fix that window. I I'm not going to report a break-in to this house that's likely abandoned and full of dead bodies. I'm just going to fix the window. <laughs> that's no good. It'll be problematic if the neighbors start looking around and stumble upon the corpses. I'll have to fix that window as soon as possible. How? How are you going to do that without being noticed? Don't worry, Keiichi Kun. Rena reached into her pocket and pulled out the key. Oh, this? I found it while we were here yesterday, so I brought it home with me. You tend to do that. Rena slid the key into the keyhole. Clank. Then the door opened like normal. Don't worry about the window. Rena has a plan. Rena's expression as we entered the house indicated that she could see right through my thoughts. I hesitated for a moment to decide if I should take my shoes off, but I chose to leave them on and followed her inside. The inside smelled as bad as ever. Rena looked eerily dignified while she calmly looked back at me and surveyed the area. Let's set Michan right down next to them so all three are lined up. I was confused when I heard that, but I quickly responded. Ah, right. I did my best to enunciate every word in my typical intonation to avoid agitating her. What's wrong, Keiichi Kun? Oh, nothing. I'll go get Mion. I said that in a light tone like I was talking about carrying in the luggage. Then I went back to the cart to get Mion. You know, I really wonder, why are there all these, like, tonal lines in this like I said that in a light tone when this arc was written for a game that was voice acted a am I wrong on that was it originally did it originally not have voices whenever this arc was written probably around like 2012 I, I don't know I don't know which port adds what but yeah uh Weird, either way. Um, but yeah. 
Mion felt like a heavy slab of meat as I carried her on my back. Ugh. I fiddled with the hatchet to keep it securely inside the tarp as I struggled to walk forward. Unfortunately, the hatchet was far too big to keep it hidden. It can't be helped. If it becomes necessary, I'll have no choice but to keep going. It's not such a big deal. Just to be safe, I adjusted the tarp on the side facing Rena. Slam. Something slipped and a kitchen knife fell to the ground. I gently picked up the knife. Huh? Does that mean Rena isn't carrying the knife? The knife that killed Mion was still soaked in blood. So wait, why is the tarp not big enough to cover the hatchet now, but it was before? <laughs> what the fuck? A single long strand of Mion's hair was stuck to that blood. It bothered me, so I tried to peel Mion's hair off, but the hair was so firmly caked into the blood that I couldn't get it off. Is it already dry? Like, sticky dry? Okay. I don't know how fast blood dries, because I've never actually, you know, drawn blood when I erase people from history, you know? Uh, well, whatever. I concealed the kitchen knife in my left hand and made my way inside the house once again. Oh. Then why'd it make a metal sound? As if it, you know, hit a metal floor or a wooden floor or a stone floor when you were outside, it would have made no sound. It would have sounded like this. At most. <laughs> when I came back inside, Rena was in the kitchen lighting the stove. Welcome back. Took you a while, didn't it? Yeah, it's heavy and kind of a pain. I answer nonchalantly, then set Mion down between Satoko and Shion with the most ill-fitting sound effect of all time. I couldn't bear to see these three girls reduced to mere objects, so I found a sheet in the closet and laid it on top of them. For a moment, it looked like a group of girls having a sleepover. Good night. You can rest easy now. I held my hands together in a prayer. Mion. Looks like you're all having pleasant dreams together. Didn't... <laughs> this was absolutely written with the CGs. We know that they don't look like they're sleeping. <laughs> I hope everyone is having fun and doing club activities together. Living our peaceful everyday life in some other world. That is my only wish. Eh, well, that's happening. Good job. Sentimental feelings rushed through me, and tears began streaming out. Though they looked like they were only sleeping. In truth, the three of them were dead. They can move no longer. Rena? She took a pile of letters out of the mailbox and carried them into the kitchen earlier. She held a stack of them together over the stove. Oh, this? I'm burning the house down. After all, we can't leave everyone this way, can we? Ah, uh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> the calm tone in Rena's voice sent a chill through me. I was struck by the feeling that I was all on my own, which might actually be advantageous given the current situation. But even so, these are our friends, right? This... All of this is your fault, Keiichi-kun. A deep voice I could scarcely believe belonged to Rena came from the kitchen. Oh, okay. The voice was so eerie that I couldn't bring myself to turn and look back at the source. Just like Keiichi-kun, Rena wants to shed tears to mourn everyone's deaths. Just like Keiichi-kun, Rena didn't really want to do this either. I thought that killing Tepe would allow Satoko to come to school again, and then we'd be able to regain our peaceful everyday life. I felt the same way, but I decided to hold my tongue. Rena quickly lowered a letter toward the stove. She did so in a careful, mechanical motion. Very precisely. The letter smoldered and crackled on the stove. Then Rena picked up another letter with one hand and held it over the stove. I told you to keep it a secret, but you talked to Shi Chan, didn't you? I think that was the beginning of the end. There were several mistakes along the way, but don't you think that's where it all started? Rena glared at me with the flames of the stove flickering in her eyes. I thought that Rena was just muttering to vent hard feelings, but the next moment... Do you understand, Keiichi-kun? Because once you told Shi-chan, she became involved. 
Shi-chan died because she was taking care of Santako-chan. And Shi-chan's death led to Mi-chan's death. In the end, we couldn't help Satako-chan. She died too. Because you got Rika-chan involved. That was before, but okay. In other words, every unfortunate event had a clear cause. I'm sorry. Once I heard Rika-chan's name, I was struck with the sense that something seemed wrong. But my guilt urged me to apologize first. You don't need to apologize. Keiichi-kun. There was nothing you could have done, right? So don't worry about it. You're not in the wrong, Keiichi-kun. This was fate. This was our destiny, predetermined from the moment we were born. <laughs> Rena picked up a half-burned letter from the stove and dropped it. A nasty smell rose up, irritating my nose. Rena. Stop playing with the fire. If you're going to burn it, do it quickly. Otherwise the smell will drift to the surrounding area. I thought that to myself as I carefully watched Rena's hands. But for some reason, I couldn't bring myself to say anything. When Rena grew tired of playing with the letters, she grabbed a jug of vegetable oil from the cupboard under the stove that she happened to know was there. She poured a thin line in a circle around the stove top. This is Oyashiro-sama's curse. Rena had a cold-hearted smile on her face, the likes of which I'd never seen before. What's going on? Why is Rena smiling at a time like this? Unlike the three dead girls sweeping like angels in the back room, the Rena standing in front of me looked like a cruel demon. This is Rena's punishment for angering Oyashiro-sama. Everyone died because Rena depended on Keiichi-kun. And when Rena took advantage of Keiichi-kun, Oyashiro-sama used Keiichi-kun's body to punish Rena. Hey, Rena, are you alright? What's gotten into you? <laughs> Why are you suddenly getting so worked up? Worked up? Do you think Rena has gone mad? I won't make any mistakes this time. No matter what happens, Rena won't give in. When you used the word destiny a while back, Rena realized it. That you should have never been trusted to begin with. That's when I realized my first mistake was relying on you. But I've already come to understand that, so it'll be okay. This time... This time I'll be able to do it. Hey, Rena? What do you mean? What are you going to do? Anxiety steadily piled up inside my chest. Rena lit the stove. The oil around the stove ignited and the flames soared up. All the oil around the stove lit up in a flash and the entire kitchen was covered in flames in an instant. Rena will not give in. Rena will never forgive Oyashiro-sama, or anyone else who tries to destroy our happiness. So Rena will keep fighting. If I've lost it, I'll build it from scratch all over again. Even if it's destroyed again and again, Rena will keep fighting to grab hold of that happiness. Seeing the passion in Rena's eyes made me want to run away. Rena's gone crazy. Y you all have been for a while, actually. Rena was so exhausted with everything that's happened that it drove her to the brink of insanity. I need to get out of this house. Rena has finally gone mad. Rena! Let's go home already! Let's get out of here for now! You look like you need some rest. That's all. That's all there is to it. What are you talking about? Rena isn't tired at all. Besides, even if you're feeling tired, you still have to work hard. Why'd I just get a text? Oh my god, shut the fuck up. What are you talking- Uh, where am I? Okay. Rena will not depend on others any longer. I'll never give up. Never cry. And never run away. We had such fun everyday lives at one point. So I'll definitely get those back. Whatever it takes to secure Rena's happiness. 
They won't let Oyashiro-sama get in my way. Rena slowly stepped forward from the flames with a slight smile on her face. The way Rena stands in this photo is so thug-ass gangster, I swear. I don't, I don't know the whole caption. Whatever. And so the heat didn't phase her at all. Rena, I understand. I get it. <laughs> Keiichi-kun, there's no need to worry. Rena will be alright. Rena absolutely will not die. I can't die until I retake my happiness with my own two hands. I won't let Oyashiro-sama get in the way. This time, it's Rena's turn to help everyone. This is bad. Everything became clear to me. Even if I tried talking to Rena, there was no way it would get through to her. It's like the person before me was another being, wearing Rena's face as a mask. I wasn't sure what to do. But I understood that she was dangerous. Run away! I have to run away! I rushed off toward the entrance. But the moment I took a step, Rena started to move. Keiji kun Rena lunged straight toward my chest. Definitely not the right uh, tone there with that line, but whatever. <laughs> Taken off guard by her surprisingly gentle touch, I quickly grabbed Rena's slender body with both my hands. Why do they keep on using the adjective slender? Like, I know that's from, like, the original eight chapters, too, but it's so weird when she's 14 at the most. Keiichi-kun, I finally got you. I, I think I fucked up the tone again. Let's go. Together. I spoke gently while holding her tight with both my hands. Please, let my thoughts get through to her. We could recruit new club members at school, and regain our happy days that way, right? And you could lead the club this time, Rena. Right, Rena? I tightly embraced Rena's frail body with both my arms. Shipmate. This was the first time in my life I'd ever hugged a girl so tight. Shipmate. <laughs> <laughs> yep, okay, yep, there it is, finally. At first, my body seemed to go numb. Then, slowly, a warmth spread through my stomach like I was being gouged with a burning torch. <laughs> what are you talking about? Talking about? Don't you realize Rena has already stopped trusting Keiichi-kun? I guess you misunderstood. Misunderstood? <laughs> my body was burning up, but it wasn't just from the heat of the flame-soaked room. The heat was pouring out of my stomach. When I touched it with my hand, I felt an odd sensation along my palm. There was something sticking into my stomach. It's the kitchen knife you brought, Keiichi-kun. The same one that stabbed Michan earlier. Th that's... You're wrong, Rena. You're the one who brought that knife! You were planning to kill Rena, weren't you? But Rena knew all about that. You put that kitchen knife on the cart, didn't you? You're wrong! When I tried speaking, it felt like even more blood came flowing out of my stomach. You still don't understand, Keiichi-kun. Didn't Rena already say that she didn't trust you? I don't believe in fate, and I'm not afraid of Oyashiro-sama. Rena will grab hold of her happiness again. Using her own two hands. That's my only wish. <laughs> Rena's terrifying smile made me lose all the strength in my body. What was I to Rena? What did I do? I pulled out the knife lodged in my stomach and tossed it away. Ugh, it was the knife from this house. The same knife that killed Shion and Satako, then took Mion's life. And in the end, it stabbed me, too. My consciousness was quickly fading. keiichi kun You were just carrying out Oyashiro-sama's orders, weren't you? You were only trying to kill Rena because you were manipulated by Oyashiro-sama, right? It's alright. Rena understands. I know that in reality, you're not the kind of person who'd do something so awful. I understand that. I understand, so it'll be all right. I've saved you from Oyashiro-sama. 
with that kitchen knife. I had no idea what Rena was talking about. I was being manipulated by Oyashiro-sama? Being saved through death? Rena, what are you talking about? You're the one who's acting strange. But still, Rena was a little hurt, you know? Because Keiichi-kun was planning to kill Rena with that knife. Up until the end, Rena thought that Keiichi-kun was a precious friend. I was thinking of helping poor, poor Keiichi-kun, but... <sighs> that can't be. Rena still thought of me as a precious friend? Farewell, Keiichi-kun. You can apologize if you'd like. Rena, if I apologize, will you forgive me? You're wrong. You're wrong, Rena. It's not my fault. I wasn't plotting anything evil. I swear, you're wrong. It's just a terrible misunderstanding, Rena. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Every time I spoke, I could feel an unsettling sensation flowing out of my stomach, but I couldn't stop apologizing. If Rena wants me to apologize, I'll do it as much as I can. If that's what it takes to take back our everyday happiness. <laughs> it's no good. Even if you apologize, it's pointless. It's pointless! <laughs> I heard the sound of the front door opening and closing. Then the room got quiet. At that point, I could only hear the vague sounds of the f crackling fire in the burning room. I'm going to die. Right here. Things get quieter on the verge of death. So cold. So cold. Hey, Mion. I guess this is what death feels like. Satoko. Shion. Rika-chan. Rena. Why is it a chapter split? No, 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 no. You have to stop now. Oh, okay, I get it. The red tech. So you're gonna spoil this part of Sumihora Boshi too, huh? The quirk with the text colors? All right. Well, I guess we're in Rena's perspective, then. I could hear the sound of the flames. Looking back, the Hojo house was covered in tall flames that set it apart from the dense forest backdrop. That's fine. That was my past burning up behind me. My happy days in Hinamizawa were up in flames. In other words, this was a resetting ceremony. Starting now. Rena Ryugu would have to rise up to start over again. I sat down on my bike. Keiji-kun's bike can stay where it is. He'll never ride it again. And there's no point trying to hide up. Why are your bikes there? Wouldn't your bikes be- WHERE'D YOUR BIKES COME FROM?! Wouldn't your bikes have been in- Fucking- The- But- The- The garbage dump?! You- you had the fucking cart! You brought the cart from your house to the dump to Satsuka- Unless you brought your bikes with you! What? Whatever. More importantly, I still have something I need to do. Something I absolutely must do in order to reclaim my happiness. Farewell, Keiichi-kun. Farewell, Michan, Shichan, Satoko-chan. Farewell. I won't give in. It can't end like this. What is it, Rika? I opted to head in the direction away from my home. I steadily made my way up the hill. The goal was to reach higher ground. A hilltop with a nice view would be ideal for surveying the state of the village. I'll have to visit the Fruite Shrine once more. Yep. I was neither excited nor tense as I imagined what I was about to do. Rika-chan, I'm heading for you now. Sorry I'm late. 
wait patiently for Renna, okay? And she's already gonna be dead, right? I'll save you too, Rika-chan. I'll set you free from Oyashiro-sama right away! The hatchet Keiichi-kun brought here was lying under the tarp in the cart. I wrapped the hatchet up in the tarp, and then sat it in the basket of my bike. After hiding the hatchet in the tarp, I couldn't help but chuckle. This hatchet is such a huge weapon, Keiichi-kun. It doesn't suit you at all. I pedaled my bike while fighting the urge to laugh. I reached out to adjust the tarp while still pedaling, hoping to avoid letting anyone see the hatchet in the basket. Is there not blood on you? For some reason, I couldn't help but enjoy myself while pedaling my bike. <laughs> Unable to hold it in any longer, I began to laugh on my own. I might be everyone's savior. I'm rescuing everyone from endlessly enduring the curse of Oyashiro-sama. <laughs> Rika-chan! Rana's coming to save you right now! I held down the tarp to keep the hatchet secure while riding my bike as fast as possible. I encountered an unexpected sight at the shrine parking lot. Parking lot. They have a parking lot? Dozens of police cars were parked there, with their lights flashing. Officers in uniform were running back and forth. It was a completely different scene compared to my visit this afternoon. Right. I visited here earlier in the afternoon to take care of Rika-chan. Oh, wait, you did already? What? Rika-chan knew all our secrets. Though she spoke innocently with a cheerful face, she occasionally warned us with a know-it-all look on her face. Honestly, the girl named Rika-chan was far stronger than she led people to believe. It seemed like she was able to see through everything. I planned to kill Rika-chan after school, when she was on her way home. I hid under the stone steps and waited for her to come home. But Rika-chan was far too capable for that. While Rika-chan was climbing the steps, she leaned over the rail and called out to me. Rena, what are you doing in a place like that? I came to see you, Rika-chan. I lied to her right off the bat. Can you take me to the Ritual Tool Storehouse? There is something I want to hide, at all costs. If I hide it there, then there's no way anyone will ever be able to find it, right? It was incredibly suspicious. A sudden request with no context. And even if Rika-chan got cautious and tried to run away, my next move was already decided. But, no. The result was entirely different. Rika-chan made no effort to resist or flee. She simply nodded and turned her back, then began to speak. It's all the same. Whether you kill me now or not, the result will be exactly the same. Rika wore an expression suggesting she had given up on everything while walking up to the shrine grounds and unlocking the door to the Ritual's Tool Storehouse. I wasn't sure if I was more surprised or disappointed. Did she really think the Ritual Storehouse was such a trivial matter? No, Rika-chan should know it all too well. She probably knows everything about it. Rena, whether you do it or not, the result will be exactly the same. Everything has already been decided, and can't be changed. Even I could tell my face had tensed up from Rika-chan's words. You too, Rika-chan. You think it's all due to fate? Wasn't this before the conversation about Mion? Oh my god. That's right. Right from the beginning, everything was already decided. Rika-chan said it again. I could feel the urge to kill bubbling up inside me destiny. I wouldn't let myself live and die at the mercy of such a concept. I'm going to fight. I'll take back my happiness with my own hands. The next moment, I heard a voice. Maybe people are starting to show up at the town hall for a meeting. So I took the key from Rika-chan's hand, locked her in the ritual storehouse, and left the area. Rika-chan didn't fight it at all. Accepting fate means admitting defeat. I'll come to kill you later. So please wait a little longer, Rika-chan. But she's dead dead, isn't she? 
I got off my bike at the parking lot, then quietly walked towards the stone steps. I could hear an uncountably large number of deep, hoarse voices. Is this some sort of prayer? There were so many people near the steps. It seemed like every elderly person in the village was gathered here. They were all rubbing their hands together, praying in the direction of the shrine. By the grace of the great god, Oyashiro-sama, we bow to you. Bestow your blessing on all of us beneath you. Excuse me. I tried to gently speak to the old woman in front, but she was so intently focused on her prayers that my voice didn't seem to reach her ears. Excuse me. Excuse me. I then tried calling out to the old woman next to her. The old woman looked back at me with frustration and rage for having interrupted her prayer. I quickly turned and looked away. Pardon me. Um, what's going on? I don't know. Oh, th that one's a guy. The old man ran off and disappeared into the crowd. That old man's incomprehensible reaction rubbed me the wrong way. What did I do? Why did he look at me like that? I found an old man sitting quietly a few steps away and called out to him in a soft voice. Excuse me, do you know what's going on? It was the curse. The curse struck right here. The elderly people nearby turned to look at me. Rika-chama fell victim to Oyashiro-sama's anger. It's over for us. Hinamizawa is finished. What are you talking about? Suddenly, an old woman standing nearby stretched out her wrinkly hand. Then, she grabbed me by the wrist. No! I immediately cried out. A sharp pain quickly coursed through my wrist. Let me go. The elderly people nearby all turned back toward me at once, staring at me with a stone-cold look in their eyes. You can see it with your own eyes. If this is an Oyashiro-sama's anger, then what is it? She was found on the shrine grounds, in front of the offering box, dead. Her stomach was sliced wide open. It has to be the curse. Rika-chan was dead, and her stomach was sliced open? That can't be true, because Rika-chan should still be locked in the ritual storehouse. It's Oyashiro-sama's curse. Oyashiro-sama's... 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 Curse. Chills raced down my neck. The odor drifting around the vicinity was reminiscent of the scent of death. So then she's just gonna start caving people's heads in, right? An old woman rubbing beads near her heart gradually raised her head. Then she slowly, slowly lift her index finger to point. Her wrinkly index finger stopped directly aimed at my chest. Oyashiro-sama's curse. It was like some creepy divination ritual. Enough. Stop it! I tried to shake off the hand of the old woman who grabbed me. I needed to get out of here, right away. However, the old woman continued tightly clenching my wrist. Let me go! You have to let me go! I vigorously swung my arms back and forth. I shook them enough force to knock the old woman down to the ground. Ugh. I reached my hand out to help the old woman, but then stopped myself. On the far side of the steps, hi Kuma guy, <laughs> I noticed a man who wasn't from around here, staring intently at me. Did he need something from me? The way he glared at me was intimidating, and after being flustered for a moment, I noticed. He was staring at something red. Keiichi-kun's blood was all over the front of my dress. When I stabbed Keiichi-kun with the kitchen knife in Satoko's house, I did feel a warm, sticky sensation on my chest. Damn it. Why didn't I notice it any sooner? I, I swear to god, this is- that's just stupid. I casually crossed my arms in front of my chest in an effort to conceal the blood. Though I knew it was already too late. I suddenly started to feel uncomfortable about all the blood stuck to my dress. How many people have already seen the traces of Keiichi-kun's blood on me? 
That old lady was pointing right at the blood. Just then, I noticed a man in the distance holding a hand to his ear and moving his lips. I've located Reina Ryugu. Located Reina Ryugu. I could hear a response coming through the earphone. An outsider working for some organized group. No doubt about it. That man was a plainclothes police officer. Roger. Plain clothes? He's wearing a suit. <laughs> Just then, the detective and I made eye contact. He casually looked up to the sky to avert his gaze. That gesture all but confirmed he was monitoring me. Why? How did he know my name and face? What did he say Roger about? Was he speaking to Perfectual Police Headquarters? Even if he started getting suspicious when he saw the blood, it didn't add up. It was weird that he knew my name. Extremely weird. I was filled with the unpleasant feeling that I was taking one step forward, two steps back. My nervous breakdown was partially alleviated when the voices of the elderly people reached my ears. I never would have guessed that the curse would target Rika Chaba. During the curse of Oyashiro Sama, all on her own. I thought it was pathetic of the old folks to speak about it so callously. It seemed like the elderly people were quickly growing less afraid of Oyashiro-sama. Because if the curse had targeted Rika-chan, it meant they had escaped harm themselves. They were egotistically regarding Rika-chan's death as a sign of their own safety. Only the wisdom of the elderly could allow them to live with such a vile worldview. Perhaps that's necessary in order to endure unmanageable situations. A skill necessary to go on living, no. But that way of thinking ultimately won't solve anything. What if that foul behavior is the source of Oyashiro-sama's anger and the true cause of the curse? Maybe Oyashiro-sama is killing all the people involved in order to punish them for something they shouldn't have done. If that's the case, I'll definitely be the next target for killing Tepe Hojo, Michan, and Keiichi-kun. Rena Ryugu is a murderer. I jumped to my feet and took off running. My blood-soaked skirt fluttered about. Oh, now it's on your skirt? I pushed aside all the elderly people standing in my way and stopped to hop on my bike. In the corner of my vision, I could see the plainclothes police officer's face turn pale and raise hell as he watched my actions. I couldn't care less. I won't allow the police to catch me. I won't let myself be killed by the likes of Oyashiro-sama. Once again, I'll have to rise up to grab hold of my happiness. I took off on my bike at full speed. I raced through the forest road where the sun had already set. It was dark, so I couldn't see the road very well. I might topple over if I simply hit a pebble. But even so, I had to run away. I had to get out of there. I had to escape! A siren rang out behind my back. The flashing red lights of a patrol car lit the dark forest road. I turned down a single lane road that intersected the forest road. If I continue in this direction, I'll end up in Okinomiya. I might be able to escape if I disappear into the crowd of the city. However, even if I pedal my bike at full speed, there's no way I can outrun a car on this narrow road. What should I do? My hesitation spread to my feet on the pedals and the bike started to slow down. Reina Ryugu, please stop and surrender yourself. Who the fuck are they talking to? I heard a strong voice calling out to me over the loudspeaker. It was a familiar voice. This is Oisi from Okinomiya Station. Please stop. A search warrant has been issued under your name. I repeat, please stop, Reina Ryugu. Who's that? as if being told to stop wouldn't encourage me to do the opposite. So I began pedaling my bike at full speed once again. I pulled back on the, if it's just a search warrant, they're not gonna, you know, hit the bike though, so I'm not sure how much they can do here. They're Japanese police officers. They're not gonna do a pit maneuver on a bicycle. I pulled back on the handlebars to make a sharp turn toward the forest at full speed. My bike jostled on the rugged terrain. But even so, this was better than running on foot. 
I was better off heading into the forest, where the patrol car couldn't follow. Right away, the path was blocked by tree roots and large stones that prevented me from riding my bike forward. That's alright, I expected as much. I tossed my bike aside along the bumpy trail. Then I caught a glance at the hatchet wrapped in the tarp in the basket of my bike. I picked it up without hesitation. This is better than being unarmed. I ran and ran and ran. I sprinted through the dimly lit forest as fast as I could, I could man manage. I was about to mispronounce that word two times. I couldn't tell left from right or east from west. I couldn't hear anything except the sound of my own labored breath and leaves crunching underfoot. My legs got drenched in water up to my ankles as I charged through a stream. Is that the river flowing from Onigafuchi Swamp? If so, I haven't made it very far. How much farther is it to Okinomiya? I pushed myself to run even faster, but my feet got tangled. My calves were bulging from the fatigue, but wasting any time worrying about that would prove fatal. So I kept pumping my legs left and right, running like I was about to fall over. How far did I run? Before I realized it, the surrounding area was completely silent. I couldn't hear the siren of the patrol car any longer. Maybe the patrol car didn't notice me take that sharp turn a little while ago. Even so, I can't get careless. I need to keep running until nobody can possibly follow. I was so exhausted that I wanted to drop the hatchet I was holding. This area looks somehow familiar. Hmm. That's it. This looks like the forest where we chased down and killed Tepe Hojo, yep. He was trying to flee, so I ran after him and swung my hatchet. I was the pursuer on that day, but today I'm the one on the run. <laughs> I'm tired. I was suddenly struck by a bout of fatigue. I stopped running and walked two or three steps before losing all energy and collapsing on the spot. Chasing. Running. Killing, being killed, changing the subject and object of those activities didn't alter the meaning much. This was all decided from the start. Rena, this is destiny. The words Rika-chan and Keiichi-kun used earlier came back to me. I see. That's right. There's no point in struggling in vain. Rena is so exhausted. Would it be okay to close my eyes for just a moment? Nobody was there, but I insisted on talking anyway. That wasn't unusual. I've been living my life for a that way for a long time. There's nothing special about today. I'm lonely and enjoy being with people, but I'm unbelievably terrified of needing to depend on others. That's not limited to today. So I, I would talk to the other person living inside of me. A courageous person who always encourages me to do my best. By talking it out, I'm able to gradually calm myself and return to being the cheerful, stupid Rena while I'm around everyone else. Ah, that's right. Everyone is already gone. So there's no need to be stupid and cheerful anymore. <sighs> I'm so tired. I tilted my head back. The massive moon was quietly looking down at me through the overgrown trees. A pleasant breeze blew along my side. Where could Keiichi-san be? I'm definitely going to find you! Huh? I heard a familiar voice. No matter where you run, these eyes will find you! Moron! Stay away! <laughs> I suddenly rose to my feet. Keiichi-kun? Satoko-chan? No way. The two of them are both alive? I looked around the area, but I was just surrounded by a dark forest, with occasional wind scattering the leaves. Was that a hallucination? Yes. You idiot! Kei-chan, you're going the wrong direction if you're trying to get away. Heading that direction is useless. The way we play tag here, it's not a contest of strength, not here. It's a contest of wits. 
me. Satoko, come this way. Ah! You can't possibly escape! <laughs> Why am I here? Satoko, your movements are so easy to predict when you're upset. This is probably a dream. I must still be sleeping in that forest. Everyone can have fun club activities together inside Rena's dreams. Hey, let Rena join in too. I came all this way to see you all, so let Rena play tag too. Huh? I was suddenly overcome with the urge to cry. But why? My heart was racing and my chest tightened. It hurt. I wanted to go back. I wanted things to go back to the way they were. I wanted to go back to those days when we had fun club activities every day. I wanted to go back to see Michan and Keiichi-kun. Rena Ryugu should be hiding in this area. They, they keep on searching for someone else. Really weird. Does Rena have a sister? Search as hard as you can. Leave no stone unturned and find her, no matter how long it takes. Huh? Whose voice is that? Rika-chan? Satoko-chan? Mi-chan? Shi-chan? Keiichi-kun? Then I woke up. I had fallen asleep at some point, leaning against a big tree. My cheeks were soaked. Huh? Was I crying in my dream? What did I see? If you find her, shoot to kill. Roger. Oh, these are the mountain dogs. That imposing voice sent a chill down my spine. It seemed like there were a lot of them. I could hear several voices and a lot of footsteps. And I heard intermittent mechanical sounds from their communications equipment. Where am I? Which way should I run? I walked softly, doing my best not to make a sound. I could see a bright light. There were a bunch of lights up ahead. It looked like the schoolyard. I might be able to reach the mountains from there. I clicked my tongue. Even though I was heading towards Okinomiya, I must have taken a wrong turn and ended up at the school. There were a lot of people coming and going at the schoolyard. I could see several trucks and vans. A bunch of strange people that looked like armed guards wandering around the schoolyard. A large number of unfamiliar people were hanging around the school. What the hell is going on? Oh, you're doing a Tatari Garoshi parallel now? Again? I FOUND HER! Bang. Bang. I heard a dry sound the same moment that a dazzlingly bright light was pointed at me. A gunshot? That was the first time in my life I heard an actual gunshot. It was rather different from the movies. It sounded more like a firecracker. Bang, bang. I heard it from a different direction this time. Apparently, the enemies had surrounded me without noticing. Enemies? Would police officers really be so quick to fire at a suspect? Regardless, I needed to get out of here, so I started running again. My feet slid on the ground and kicked up pebbles. Ugh. I left my hatchet behind earlier. Should I go get it? What should I do? Given the situation, I hesitated to make a quick decision. Perhaps I was finding it difficult to accept that I was suddenly being shot at. I have to go back! I won't be able to fight without a weapon! But when I calmed down, I realized that a hatchet was a poor weapon to use against enemies armed with guns. So I ran back to the road I came from without doubting myself. I noticed several men armed with guns running this direction. I didn't recognize their faces, and I couldn't understand why they were all dressed in dark outfits. But the one thing I did understand was that their muzzles smelled of gunpowder and were pointed right at me. Even though I was able to keep calm, I still didn't know what to do. Ba-bang, ba-ba-bang. How long is this fucking arc? There was nothing else to do. The shot struck me. The shock made me feel like I was floating in the air. A strand of my hair gently fell down from the sky. The next moment, I tumbled to the ground. Some sharp pebbles cut into my cheeks, and I banged my ankle on a tree root. My body started rolling down the hill. I was rotating so fast I couldn't tell up from down. My limbs were being tossed around like a toy, and the ground continued beating on my defenseless body. Is this the curse of Oyashiro-sama? No way, it couldn't be like this. But then, who are those people? Slam. 
I hit my head on the trunk of a massive tree and finally stopped rolling. Ah. Is this the end? Am I going to die right here? My whole body felt hot. Especially my arm. It was burning up. So hot it felt like it was about to come off. The palm of my hand was slimy. I noticed that... No, wait, 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 wait. It's, uh... No, yeah, all the text is white now. There hasn't been red text for a while. It's not just spoken lines, right? I don't know. I realized what it was without even looking. It was blood. Blood was pouring out of me. No, yeah, the narration should be red. And, but it's white now, because I guess. Why not? <laughs> when I looked, I saw blood dripping from my right shoulder all the way to my hand. The blood was pouring profusely from my upper arm, spurting with every pulse. My arm was shot. But it was just my arm, right? I gently tried moving my ankle, and it moved. So I can still walk! I can't let myself give in to Oyashiro-sama. I can still fight! Another rush of energy suddenly came to me when I realized there was still hope of survival. I put my left hand on my knee and staggered to my feet. I won't give in! Let's go. Start walking! Then, shortly after I started walking... Bang! Bang! Ah! It was close by. Just as I heard those noises, an athletic-looking man was rolling on the ground toward me. He nearly shouted, but I caught myself and suppressed the urge. Then he tumbled to the ground right at my feet, and I noticed it was a policeman in uniform. Is this the curse of Oyashiro-sama too? My head was spinning, but I desperately tried to comprehend the situation. Did Oyashiro-sama kill a police officer? Why? Because of the curse? No way, that doesn't sound right. Get away from the village. I heard a voice coming from the officer at my feet. His stomach was gleaming with a dark, damp substance. This man was on the verge of death. I knew that instinctively. Get away from Hinamizawa. The police officer squeezed out a few hoarse words, desperately trying to tell me something. Huh? I cautiously sat down beside the police officer. This man is going to die soon, so it'll be alright. I convinced myself of that as I moved my head closer to the policeman. The officer was coughing up blood as he squeezed out a few more words. Toxic gas from Onigafuchi Swamp. Everyone in the village is dead. It's the end of Hinamizawa. Oyashiro curse. After that, I could only hear the whistling sound of his breath. Hold on. What is that supposed to mean? What's this about toxic gas? I shook the police officer by the shoulders. He said that toxic gas was released from Onigafuchi Swamp, and all the villagers were already dead? Was that also part of Oyashiro-sama's curse? And what about all the strangers at the school? Does that have something to do with it? I shook his shoulders even more. Hey, what do you mean everyone is dead? Come on, please tell me, come on! But the officer's neck just shook from the force. His eyes were open but they were no longer looking at anything. He's been dead for a while now. I have no time to waste talking to corpses. So I gently set the corpse down and took a deep breath. The curse of Oyashiro-sama? Don't be ridiculous. Like hell I'd be Oyashiro-sama's slave. Like hell I'd die. I held down the blood on my arm as I rose to my feet and began walking again. I recognized these mountains. If I cut through here, it shouldn't take long to reach my hideout in the garbage mountain. So I kept walking. I kept walking under the cover of darkness. Once in a while, I could hear gunshots off in the distance. Maybe they were chasing a field rabbit or something, thinking it was me. Either way, I was grateful. I cradled my battered body and regulated my breathing to avoid making any noise as I continued walking forward. That police officer must have been shot by mistake, right? Suddenly, suspicion started bubbling up inside me. 
At that point in time, they had already shot me. They'd missed my vitals, but I was definitely shot. The enemies should have known this. But even so, they shot at that policeman. That officer and I look completely different, and we're wearing completely different clothes. My heart was throbbing, and it wasn't just because of my injuries. I had no doubt that something mysterious was going on, but I had no idea what it could be. An entire village annihilated by a gas disaster? Toxic gas was pouring through the village while I was running through the forest? If that's the case, will it kill me too? Something crunched under the scraggly soles of my feet. It was an empty can. Before I realized it, I had arrived at the garbage mountain. I headed straight to the station wagon. When I opened the sliding door and found my favorite cushions neatly lined up, I felt relieved. I made it here safely. I leaned against the seat and wiped my wound with a towel. Once I applied some pressure on my arm, the pain started to recede. I never brought a first aid kit here. I'd have to go home to get one. I thought that, but once I sank into the seat, it seemed it would be difficult to get up again. All the fatigue that had been building up finally released. It'll be okay for me to rest here a little while, right? This is my secret hideout. Nobody should be able to find me here. It's my territory. My safe zone. Bomb. If I have to die from some gas disaster, I want to die sleeping here. I cautiously closed my eyes while thinking that. Russell, Russell. My throbbing nerves started act started up again. I definitely heard a sound out in the darkness just now. I held my breath for a moment. Who's there? There was no reply. Is somebody hiding out there? I held my breath and took a look around. Russell, Russell. I could faintly hear a sound. I'd like to turn on the lamp to get a better look at the surroundings, but that would only give my away my location to the enemy. So I concentrated on looking around in the dark, desperately surveying the area. Who's hiding out there? Did you come here to find me? How'd you know I'd be here? Eventually my eyes got used to the darkness, but I thought it was strange. Something was nagging at the corner of my mind. Something seemed off. It was strange. Russell, Russell. It wasn't the sound of a person. It sounded like papers rubbing together. I was taken aback. I'd found the source of the sound. But what's this? No way. Then that means... I need to get going. I have to tell someone about this. No matter what it takes, I need to let someone know. I stretched my hand out into the darkness to grab the frame and pull myself out of the station wagon. And in that moment, yeah, I got shot and the chapter ended. <laughs> Even though I was shot, I didn't understand it right away. However, my consciousness started to feel heavy and the sleepiness began to set in. The pain was far beyond my expectations and the burning heat ran through my entire body. <laughs> I couldn't see those kids. Were they able to escape? The direction they were heading was... What was it? I can't remember. My request to anyone other than those people, seek out those kids and please guide them. I hope this miserable fate can end with me. I don't even know what she's talking about here. Crazy to the end, Rena. Please, whoever you are that noticed this, please unravel the truth. This can't be the work of a curse. That is my only wish. Oh, you're parroting the Oni Kakushi ending now. I can't believe I called that. <laughs> oh, thank fuck. There's not even an after party. It's just over. Let's fucking go. Oh my god. Why was that chapter so unnecessarily long? I, I thought, oh, I must be almost done. No, bitch. I was like not even halfway. <laughs> Oh, it's over, though. God. Oh, my God. I wish I could have left this in 2023. Jeez. It only took an hour for this part. Thankfully. That's normal. That's good. 
and I was fully expecting an after party, but they didn't do one. So that's good. I, I guess because Terima Washi is like the who invited blood to who invited blood, you know, with uh, the question arcs. But yeah, Jesus Christ. Ah. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I feel like if I had known, hey, bitch, there's like five hours left. Don't try and do it all in one sitting. I might have enjoyed this more, but the pacing got so slow for something that's so... That's just retreaded territory, basically. Uh, unless... Oh, you're supposed to read this before Sumi Horiboshi. Don't! I, I don't think I can express that more than just that. Fucking don't! If... <laughs> Let this be a public service announcement. Do not read Tsuki Otoshi before Sumi Horiboshi. Don't do that. Ah, okay. All right. I, I, I already split the first part. So this is probably like a three hour long video. If you watch the whole thing. Thanks. I'm happy this is done. <laughs> Jeez, why was this the longest arc so far? I was expecting some of the arcs to be, like, longer than three hours on average. But I didn't expect anything already to beat Psycho Roshi in length. A and still, nothing as good as that. The we hit peak in the first five episodes. And this is episode, what, 28? Jesus Christ. But yeah, that's going to be it for this episode, and consider this my outro for the last episode too, because yeesh. Oh my god. So next episode, we'll start Yoi Goshi. Look forward to it. I don't feel like doing my entire outro. Like the video if you did it, if you did like it. Dislike it if you're a bitch. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, hit the notification bell. That's the video. I need to eat lunch. Goodbye.